creepy. Hello, everybody. Uh, it is not Thursday night at 8 p.m. It's Thursday at 12 p.m. noon Eastern. And guess what that means? It means we have a special time for a gab and doodle. I'm on spring break, and so I get to uh, uh, talk to someone from a different country. I guess I get to do that sometimes anyways. Um, but this time, I get to talk to someone from the European countries. Um, so we have a special guest on today, Estrella Lorenco, uh, who is uh, going to be coming to us, I believe, from Ireland, which is pretty exciting. Um, and so we're going to have uh, a chance to chat. Uh, I know they can't stay on forever, so because um, time difference. Time works weird. Um so, uh, we're going to get started here in just a second. Let me um, get all my my things in order here to make sure that I am live. I wish I had a better way of doing this every single time so you don't have to see me lean off to the side. But it is what it is. Um, and so, um, we are going to be uh, inviting our guest in in just a second. I um, want to give you a couple of heads ups. Um we just had a conversation uh, today. There's a, a graphic, a kids graphic novel festival that happens at the Silver Unicorn in Acton, Massachusetts every spring. And I believe it's April 20th, if I do my math correctly, without having my calendar in front of me, uh, that I will be hosting um, Gavin Dude live from there. We're gonna see if we can get that up live on uh, the internet here uh, for everybody to watch. And I'll be talking with a couple of um, uh, graphic novel uh, and uh, children's uh, illustrators and whatnot, authors and illustrators. Um, and so uh, keep an eye out for that one because that might be a special time and date. Um, but uh, let me let in our special guest and then we'll start the day. I was going to say evening. Start the day and we'll go from there. I just need to put in one last little thing, which is the ask us anything. Uh, and I'll try to keep uh, ask us anything. I'll try try. There we go. Uh, try to keep tabs on it as we go along. Let me just pin that. Okay, so I'm gonna let in our special guest and we'll get going. I always do this, the magic hands. Let's see. There we go. Here oh. we go. Wait. Hi. Hello. Oh, how are you? Good. A little nervous. A little <laughs> Good. nervous. There's nothing to be nervous about. I know I say that, but I'm used to doing this. So um, thank you for joining me uh, this evening for you, this afternoon for me. Uh, what time, what time are we there? Five o'clock? Six o'clock? I thought it was five, but it's actually, it was actually supposed to be a four. So that's okay. So I actually can stay two hours full. Oh, okay. Okay, awesome. Um, so remind me, you're in you're in Ireland, right? Yeah. Where, where I'm in Dublin. You? You're in Dublin. Okay. We're yeah. uh, we're making uh, uh, arrangements right now. I'm teaching a class uh, in Ireland, in uh, Ballyvon. I'm probably saying that horribly, but uh, near Galway. It's right near Galway. Ballyboden. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm not Irish, yeah. so I don't know. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. I just, I'm going to do a horrible American accent when I talk about it. But, um, so, uh, thank you for joining me today. Um, we're gonna, we're gonna do our standard sort of protocol of gabbin and doodling. Um, and I wanted to say, uh, thank you again for coming on. We, we sort of fell in love with your work with the, uh, we, we ended up getting counting to bananas. Uh, and that one sort of got us. Uh, right off the bat and then seeing all the other works I'm I'm dying to get my hands on and I know it's not out yet I believe but walkies yeah yes it's not out no that's coming out oh. what, like another month month and a half uh, yeah 14 of May 14. my brain is like, so we're still in March so two months well actually two months today today's the 14th hey there you go two months today <laughs> yeah yeah happy two month early birthday <laughs> birthday something sort of, um, <laughs> So uh, we're, we're very honored to have you on and to, to get to know you and chat with you. And I have so all sorts of questions for you sort of lined up already. Um, 
But why don't you tell the crowd that's watching sort of who you are and what you do. Give us a little sort of, uh, what's your bio? Give us your bio. <laughs> My short bio. Yeah. Because I've been, I've been uh, jumping around. We got a stall on this end. And, what? Oh, there you go. Okay. Hello? You're back. Yeah, can you hear me okay? You okay? Yeah. I'm okay? Yeah, yeah let, okay, me, sorry. let me see if it's something happened to the live feed here real quick. Hold on one second. Let me see if I can get this up and running. I hope it's not on my end. Sometimes, sometimes this happens. So bear with it. Okay. I hope, I hope it's not me. Because uh, I, I don't know. I think, I think no, our internet no, no. is okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm getting, I'm getting the sort of the, the circle that's saying, hey, something's not quite right. And so give me one second. Okay. I'm going to try to get this up and running again, see mm -hmm. if I can get this. Um, uh, in fact, let me ch check one thing. Hey, Lauren. Yeah. How's our internet? Okay. My wife. <laughs> okay. So I can see you and it's on my phone. I don't know if it's going through to everybody right now. Uh, my wife's sort of trying to keep track of it upstairs. Uh, let's see, I have live feed. I'm trying to watch. Sorry, the technical difficulties no. here. I can see. I can can see on my screen because I wanted to see on my computer if my if my work was showing up on screen yeah. and I'm a little pixelated and sometimes you're freezing you're frozen yeah I, I have a feeling that it's coming from my end that our Wi-Fi dropped for a second and so we're uh or, or is struggling and so I'm gonna give it just a second here and we'll get going but um it should be recording stuff on this end um because it's going through my phone it's a matter of the live feed that I have I have a, I have the same thing I have an iPad No. Uh, let me try that one more time and see if I can get it here on this end. I'll have you do the the uh, who you are in just one second once we get it up and running. But um, thank you again for taking the time. I know that your time is precious. You have a little one, right? You have a, I have a little, little one and another one on the way. And another so, one on the way. Oh, I, uh, how far? How far I don't know if that was clear when we talked. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we have one, uh, she's due to be born in July the 2nd, so busy, busy, we'll, we'll be even more busy, so okay. <laughs> you'll be a bit crazy. This, uh, <laughs> how, how, how old is the older one? She, she's not even two years old, she's 22 months, so Ooh. okay. <laughs> she's going to be two years and two months older than the other one. We wanted a gap of two years and six months between the two, because that's my gap between me and my brother um and my partner and his brothers but it happened earlier so <laughs> like okay whatever as long as it happens because you know we just really wanted to complete our family we just wanted another one yeah. so four months uh, so it's another baby girl so we have four months is not going to make much of a difference in the long run i can't imagine that i mean unless there's some like schooling thing uh that comes into play but i imagine that after a couple of years four months isn't going to mean a thing um well, congratulations on all of that. That's wonderful. Thank you. Uh, I, I was just watching a um, a person on Zoom who has a little one that must be, I'm gonna guess, maybe two, something like that. And like, it brings back all these mm -hmm. memories of my son at that age, of like, the the like squirming around, not being able to, yes, hugs and things of that sort. Um, let's see if my I'm trying to keep an eye on this. So we're back. Um, how old is your little one now? Uh, uh, we, we, he's 10 going on 11, I think. Okay. I think, I know, you I know. You <laughs> have a teenager, wow. Yeah. How do you oh, feel? <laughs> oh, he's, get, he's getting the attitude. He's starting to get the attitude oh, like a teenager. No. Um, okay, I do think we are back. We are, okay. uh, I see, I see us, we're a little grainy, but it will fix itself as it goes along. So let's, let's jump back into it. Introduce yourself. Tell people who you are 
Right, my name is Trela. I'm from Portugal. Um, and I know you actually interviewed uh, Brizita. Uh, I hope I'm saying her name right. And she's actually from Portugal as well. And I was very surprised. Her accent doesn't show at all. <laughs> Anyways, um, <laughs> I'm from Portugal. I, I came to Ireland in 2009. So I've been here almost 15 years. And I came to go to animation. So I've been in animation for, I'm going to say 14 years um because give or take i started a bit, a bit in college sneakily uh, i should be more in college but i was trying to get work in animation already in in portugal and then i jump into ireland and i was uh, an animator for a long long time and then i jump around and i finish as a storyboard artist but now i'm in my dream job of being a children's book uh, illustrator and now i write my own books which is really exciting yeah. because of my age and it's kind of been pushing me to do it uh which I'm so glad because we got walkies um, and we have uh, Peek and Boo, which is going to be a series of board books, uh, which I'm really excited. Was The character was drawn from my daughter before she was born. So Aww. that's special. Yeah. <laughs> but I saw you uh, exactly. uh, with uh, Page Street, right? Yeah, with Page Street. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, walkies is with Page Street, yeah. Oh, and Peek and Boo is with Source Books. I didn't realize Walkies was with Page Street. Okay, I'm, I'm starting. I'm waiting yeah. for a manuscript from him to start a fourth book. No, a fifth book. Is it a fifth book? In the series? Yeah, well, the series it's a fourth. Been working? Yeah, it's a fourth in a series, but I think it may be my fifth book with them, or maybe my sixth. I'm trying to remember. I don't know. It's been a lot, but Page Street okay. is like really close to here. I actually teach uh, about uh, I'm going to say two miles away from their offices. And so to me, it's like this oh, local company, but no they, have a, they have a reach that goes far beyond that. So, um, so yeah, th this is a dream job for you though, being able to, uh, to draw oh, God, and write is writing. What, what can we hold on? I want to back up is writing the dream job or is it the mm -hmm. illustrating is the dream job or is it both? I think, I think, I've heard this somewhere in another podcast and they said uh, telling stories visually is my dream so okay. I think I so that kind of mixes the two so uh, so I love illustrating but I love telling my own stories so I think telling my own stories visually through picture books is definitely a dream or, or comics I'm also I also really like comics this is what I mean my friends must be thinking you just stop on something because <laughs> even in the studio I was jumping in, around quite a lot I was an animator for I think I was an animator for 10 years and then I jump in the last four years I jump between team lead and animation director uh, episode director it was jobs that didn't really suit me and then uh, storyboard revision storyboard artist yeah. just really just, <laughs> just jump around all, all over the place. i feel like that's the that's the uh the way of the artist in general though like i feel like even even like i've been in kids books for about 10 years something like that but i was doing animation before and i've been doing teaching i've been doing editorial i've been doing gallery work it's it's one of those things where it's like uh, I don't know if there's a steady, like, I guess I don't know any artist really that's been like steady all the way through of, of what they want to do, minus someone that's like a painter, like they're, you know, a fine art painter and they live in their studio. Um, so uh, a couple of things before we get started. Uh, one, you're allowed to jump when you need to. And so if you do have to leave earlier than normal, just don't, don't hesitate. I won't be offended. Uh, two, <laughs> my wife does a lovely job of keeping track of all the materials uh, that we use so people can like pin down what you're using. And if I remember correctly, you said you're going to be on your iPad. I am. It's not very interesting, is it? <laughs> it's interesting. 99% I... of the world is working with an iPad right now. So it's not. Uh, I, I know. Sure. What I'll ask you to do is maybe, uh, are, are you on Procreate? Are you on Fresco? What are What's the app they're I'm using? On, yeah, I'm on Procreate. Okay. Just, just the most banal everybody's using. <laughs> but see, there's a thing though. There's like in that world of, uh, of iPads and Procreate, then you get into like what brush you use. Like that's a whole uh, a whole nother game that goes with it, um, and then there's uh, like the, the the special of the effects that you use. Let's put it that way. Um, right. Okay. So, so iPad, Procreate, and then what are we gonna draw? So first of all, I saw your 
your post about being Pi Day. I was like, oh, Pi Day, maybe I should do something about it. But I was like, no, do you know what? It's Patty's Day this weekend in Ireland and in everywhere in the world, St. Patrick's Day. So I thought I was, I was going to draw a little leprechaun. So I was going to draw a, like a character design sheet of le leprechauns. I have no idea what's coming out. So I haven't okay. done anything. Okay. So this is going to be terrifying to try to think uh, live. Okay. okay, no, I'm going to, I don't know 100% what I want to do. All I know is I want to have a forest in mind. That's all I got. Okay. I don't know what the story is. I don't know any of it. I was thinking about doing some sort of cottage thing, but I didn't even think about St. Patty's Day to be able to throw something like that in there. And so maybe that's what I'll do is I'll, I'll twist it towards that of some sort. Um, my wife is, is pointing out that our feed is still sort of crunchy. And so what I oh. suggestion, if you're a game with this, is that we stop okay. the feed and then we hop gone in a minute once I reboot my my phone and that should correct all the crunchiness that we and so we'll have okay. one part that will air and then a second part will be us actually working okay. and so is that, okay. is that so, kosher with you? yeah so yeah, so you don't you don't need to be on screen anymore so I can, I can set up my camera yeah, sorry did I get that right yeah you can set up your camera I will invite okay. you in in a matter of about two minutes okay and I hope, hope I have the camera okay, okay. Because I was okay. fighting half well, an hour before we got on air. Be able to watch, so we should be good. But so give me. Oh. I'm gonna. I'm gonna turn this off for anybody that's watching. Just come back in a matter of seconds, and it should write itself. So I'm not pixely and moving around like I'm in some eight bit video game. Uh, and then we should be better. Um, and we'll okay. Be back. I'll say them. All right. Bye. All right. Hey everybody. Uh, let's check and make sure this feed is working now. Come on, come on, feed. I want you to be nice and clear. Oh, it is nice and clear. Oh, internet. Why do you work that way? Um, so let me get this set back up. Thank you, everybody, for coming back. Uh, so let me put in the Ask Us Anything, and I will... Maybe that's it. Maybe if I put in Ask Us Anything, it somehow is some horrible thing. So, uh, let me see. Oh, yeah. I'm supposed to introduce what's going on. <laughs> so, this is Gavin Doodle. It's a, a special noontime Gavin Doodle with Australia Lorenco, uh coming in from Ireland. Uh, we're going to be doing a bit of uh, chatting and making and all that kind of stuff here in just a second. I'm going to let them in in just a minute. I'm just making sure that everything is all set up on my side. Um, we already have the intro part, and uh, I just posted that, which was maybe about, I don't know, 10, no, almost 20 minutes. Wow, that was long for an intro. Um, and so we'll be uh, start making stuff here in one second, but uh, you can tune into part one if you want to make sure that you hear a little bit about sort of what this is. Uh, let me see if I can buy, invite in our lovely guest. Let's see. Hmm. Hmm. Oh. Uh, right. And we're back. We are back. And we it are. Looks, it looks clear on my end. And we see. Oh, wait. This is going to have to be completely different. Oh, my goodness. As, it needs to be vertical. That's the only. That's the so... only. Wait a second. About now. That my guess is that's okay with the yeah. There you go. Uh, and then we just need. So my call to everybody. That's yeah, it. We, <laughs> we need it zoomed out a little bit so we can see the actual um, uh, screen a little bit bigger. There we go. Oh, perfect. Okay here. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. Teeny for me. Oh my goodness. This is this is gonna be weird. <laughs> Wait, well, can, you, can, you, can you move the camera back or move the the? Let me see. There you go. Now you should be able to. That should work. Yeah, that should work. Now people, people should be able to see. So I'm gonna switch my camera and get it all set up so we can get going here. Take a second. Of course, this is not staying now. Still, come on. This is uh again, the tech friendly uh side of things where everything goes haywire. But look, beginning of the call. Uh, so as we as we set up here, I don't even know what I'm drawing. This is the doodle I was playing with in the background. But 
tell me a little bit, uh, sort of, I know you already gave us a little bit of a background uh, mm -hmm. of who you are and what you do, but I'm wondering, uh, maybe, could you dive in a little bit deeper into sort of the, uh, the, what got you interested in art in the first place? Where was the, where was the beginning oh. of this, this madness that has become your career? It's a great question. Uh, Jesus, we have to go back a lot. I think I always like to draw, right? Yeah. Like every, every kid in this um, industry. But my best friend uh, used to draw really, really, really well when we were kids. And her father uh, is a graphic designer. And he used to draw the coolest things. Um, like he used to draw like, like, like one time. I mean, he showed me a, a, a little bee that he drew and he was on a watch and he was like, what? You're a superstar. You just made a, a bee and it's on a watch now. Wow. That, oh, sorry. I'm just going to make a bit of noise. I'm so sorry for everybody. It's okay. I'm just trying to set up this as I didn't think about the vertical side of it. And now I'm trying to set up. Um, yeah. And I, she used to draw. So we used to draw together. We used to draw little comics together. And I think he really started there for me. Um, I don't know. I, I don't know if it started early. I knew I used to draw when I was very small. My mom always tells the story. She thinks it's hilarious. I know my daughter is doing the same, uh, which is when we used to go to restaurants, uh, I used to draw on the table, right? Because in Portugal, uh, the ta we, we don't just, we didn't just have mats. It's like, it was actually, uh, the whole table was paper. Yeah. So, like, yeah. so tempting. And, you know, if you want to keep your kid happy, you just give it a pen. And we were really happy just painting is this okay now the setup uh yeah yeah it should be fine i think people can see sort of what you're doing and be able to watch that should be good okay um, um yeah, so there are a few restaurants that are uh here that have that same setup um specifically like some the ones that i've always been to have been sort of italian restaurants that uh that yeah. have that sort of like whole sheet of like brown paper on the table and uh, they'll you ask for crayons or something of the sort and they'll bring them out to you and you can just doodle all day long yeah. um so so it was it was right from the get-go that you were uh you were but in I love was, with art yeah or... but then, yeah but, but i didn't really follow i didn't really uh i'm gonna i didn't really continue art for a while i thought you know like we used to do those how do you call um those tests to see what 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 maybe you'd be inclined to to study yeah. uh, and it said for me it was art and science and at the time we were like we were like 14 so you know 14 what do you know about life so i, I didn't think that art was going to give me any jobs so i thought okay so i guess i'll just i'll just go to science so i went to science for a while so i did two years of science in secondary school uh can you see what i'm drawing or is it too small yeah no i see it Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to see because I can draw what, a leprechaun while I talk. What, what, kind <laughs> never done what was the kind of science are we talking? What's the... Uh... Uh, it was just general science. So this was, I would have been 15 and 16. Uh, so we would be very young. So back in Portugal, you have a uh, secondary school and you have to pick a topic. So you have to pick between science uh, or um, humanities or art uh or something to do with my economy something like that okay uh, and at 14 that's i think that's really early um so you know i i picked science because i thought well i like science i think i like science i think art is not going to give me any jobs because you know i thought that arts was uh, architecture and fine fine art painting that's all i thought it was uh so i didn't follow it uh, so I was in I was in science for two years, and then as a teenager, you start getting, uh, you know, question your life, and yeah. you, I start getting a lot of panic attacks. Uh, my mom was like, "Okay, if you're getting a lot of panic attacks, let's go see a psychologist to see if she can help you." And we went through the whole thing of, you know, what do you want to do in life? I was like, I don't know. Uh, are you happy where you are? No, no, I'm not happy. <laughs> I'm not happy doing science because <laughs> it got really hard, right? It got really, yeah. really hard. After the second year, <laughs> Wait, and you just—how old were you at the time? You were only sixteen. Yeah, that's pretty. That's pretty like young to not only uh, choose your your life path, 
<laughs> of course. I know. But, but also to like, uh, to pin down a lot of things. Like, I, I feel like that's a time where you're going through a lot of change still. Like, it's not, obviously like teenage years are going to be rough in general, but like outside of even career, I feel like there's so many changes that happen in that age range that to, oh, to chalk them all up to a little test that you took. Like I, I, we had a similar thing where I took a test and it came up that I needed to be a farmer. And it's like, <laughs> no, that, that's not who I am. That's not what I want to do for my life. Um, so uh, I'm sorry, go, go ahead. So you, uh, no, I, I completely agree with you. I think it's way too early. Uh, it's just because you do three years of whatever subject you picked, like science or arts or whatever, and then you go to college. So it's like, it's like they narrow down a little bit. So then it narrows down completely when you go to college but anyways yeah i was way too too young but yeah so my mom brought me to that lady um and she was great uh, for a while <laughs> she really helped me she helped me like <laughs> yeah because then she she kind of didn't want me to go to art school at some point i was like okay you can't make that decision for me yeah. anyways but she's the first one who told me that there was an animation school and i dropped everything i was like what do you mean there's an animation school in ireland in ireland in portugal I was like oh my goodness that is that is a dream so I not that night I went home and I I I saw the course and I made up my mind. I said that's what I want to do forever. I want to do I want to be an animator. Uh, my parents weren't delighted. <laughs> she wasn't delighted because I was an okay student in science. Um, you know there was you know well, I had okay grades. They just got really bad on the last year uh, because I really was losing interest and I didn't want to be there. Um, but they're like, why this animation school? So in Portugal, you have normal uh, public schools, uh, and then this is a professional school. Okay. So it's, I think they're better seen now, but at the time they were not. They were, you know, my parents said, oh, these schools are for electricians and people that are going to hairdressing, uh, hairdressers. Like, we, want, we would like to go to college because, you know, in my family, um, you know, they, they all they all went to college uh, to do whatever. So they're like, why why are you dropping like good grades in in um, in, in science to to pursue yeah. something? This might be just you. We might just be going a little crazy. <laughs> my my grandmother told me you're just going through a phase. So I, I am not going through. A phase. Oh, those <laughs> are the words. Those are the words. You're like you're like yeah. Oh, oh, I'm gonna prove you wrong. <laughs> oh yes, that's it. That's it. You put the fire on my butt. Now I'm definitely going. <laughs> definitely going. <laughs> We, we have similar things here, like trade schools, like there, there are, um, like you said, like electricians and plumbers and stuff like that can go, like you can go to tech schools and high schools that will do the same thing. But there, mm -hmm. there's rarely are there art schools or things like choosing animation that early on. Um, there's, there's a few out there, but uh, I have, I have the same like uh, challenge of trying to convince family like the right. value in art uh, early on. And now now I think they get it, but do, does your family now understand? Uh, oh, they do, yeah. No, they're, 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 they said that we're glad you're stubborn. Yeah, okay. <laughs> we're glad you're very stubborn. Because would you believe that for the first year of that school, I couldn't, I couldn't talk about it. I was not allowed. To, like you could, but it was, it would just, you could just see their faces going, oh, no, we don't want to hear about this school. They really thought it was a face. They're a little bit... <laughs> <laughs> they're a little bit um uh, unimpressed let's say that um yeah. but it, it was three years of animation school so in the professional school what happens is uh at least in portugal you do so half the day you do the normal subjects uh like uh you know like portuguese maths geography history uh, and then the other half of the day you just do whatever subject you're 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 studying so it, in our case it was animation so oh my goodness we they, they, we still say that was one of some of the golden years of that school huh. we had so many great teachers and they're all working in the industry so you know you know you know like you your teacher so your teacher and you're working so what's better for the students it's you know they, they they can learn uh from somebody that is on the job that can give them real information like um so oh my goodness we were so lucky we learned everything about character design um do the animation on paper uh a little bit of 3d a little bit of flash i don't think anybody knows flash anymore i think they, <laughs> they work with animate i think that's animate, the animates basically the same thing as flash it's got some more bells and whistles but yeah okay that's uh what wait what era of flash were you were you like oh are we talking can you guess 
uh, I mean, were you early Flash or were you? Because like, I'm trying to think what year I started doing Flash. It must have been 2000 somewhere in there. Okay, let me. That I think I jumped into Flash. Mac Mine was. Flash. That's oh, sorry. Oh, you were you were you were so you were 2000 you say yeah well, well okay. where were we talking for you what what era um, 2003 2004 so that's okay. not much later no much no later. So it's in the same ballpark yeah yeah that's uh so it was macromedia yeah macromedia before all these people out there talking about adobe animate and, no way <laughs> macromedia what a company uh, <laughs> now did you instantly like understand it or was there a learning curve for you to jump in because obviously like now you're in kids books and the the transition from animation to children's books there as much as people want to say like there's a huge difference it's still storytelling fundamentally and it's mm -hmm. about understanding story beats and things of that sort but when you first got into the animation side of things or just learning how to animate and tell a story through movement mm -hmm. was it static um challenge for you was it something that like you really had to study or was it something that just came naturally to you no it absolutely it did not come natural to me it was such a shock i thought i was ready for it and i was a very average low student uh so my my, my colleagues used to have way better grades than i did uh during that time um uh, and a teacher of mine told me you know if you want you know you can just animate Animate at home, you'll, you'll get better if you animate at home. Um, and I really wanted to get better and I really wanted to animate at home. But at the time, we were only using light tables in school, and I thought, okay, that's the only thing I can use. But, you know, light tables are, are expensive yeah. um, and you can't just go to a shop and buy it. Uh, so uh, you had, I think a guy used to custom made them. Uh, but I was like, I don't know, I, I, I'm not, I don't, you know, I was 17 at the time, so I'm not, I'm not going to spend money. Um, so I thought, okay, I'll try to animate in Flash like I would animate in um, a light table. So hand-drawn with onion skin like it was the light table. Um, yeah. And because I start, you know, I started uploading my animations and I, th I don't think you can find them anymore. I really wish I could see them because it's, you know, <laughs> kind of like, uh, you know, in DeviantArt, you know, DeviantArt. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so um, are, you still, have, are they still out there on DeviantArt, or are they, you... should, they, they should be, uh, but I can't. I can't. If if I go, can I go to DeviantArt here and I just show you, or uh, you can if you want. I don't know. No, if you it's okay. Go, well, no, probably. maybe not. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there's there's certain artwork from my childhood I would not uh, throw out on the internet for people to see. Let's put it that way. It was uh, <laughs> trying times. Yeah, um, <laughs> but it was it was so, definitely a curve, definitely a very steep curve. Yeah, um, uh, and then so you did you know that Kidlit was the thing that you like? Like, at what point did Kidlit become your dream job? So this is this is the funny bit. I think it's always because somebody pushes me to do something. It's it's very funny. Okay, in animation, in fairness, it's because somebody told me about it, and I just didn't know. But in Kidlit. It was actually really, really late. I was already in animation for a very long time. Even though I love Kidlip uh, and I love children's books, I always collect them. I just never saw myself as a creator until one day a friend of mine from, from home, uh, he's a, he's a, um, he worked in animation as well, so that's how we got to know each other. But he's all, he also publishes uh, books, uh, comic books. Okay. And he was looking at my drawings on, on Instagram and he said, Jesus, when are you ever, when are are you ever going to make a book so I can sell? And it was so, so nice. It just, I think that's it. That was the moment that I was like, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> a what, what now? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I can make a book. Uh, <laughs> so uh, he was into comics. So I tried to, to, I knew I wasn't ready to do comics at the time. Um, I wasn't ready to do story. I, I, you know, I wasn't very good at story, so I was like, okay, I'm gonna take it seriously and do some courses online. So I did, you know, the Chris Oatley Academy. I don't know, it's not on anymore. Mm. Do you know, do you know who they are? No, I don't know. Um, offhand. Um, they're they're somewhere in America. They used to have a really nice podcast called Paper Wings. Um, and they had, yeah, they they. I was gonna say. 
uh, uh, yeah, they, they had a really nice uh, course about storytelling, Storyteller's Summit. So I learned a lot about story and then I got really into the whole thing. I didn't draw anything for my friend because I realized the mammoth job it is to do a comic. Yep. <laughs> So I said, <laughs> I said to him, look, I think, uh, I think I can't do this just yet. Maybe give me a few years in a few years time. And then I thought, look, what's the, what's the second thing? What's the, <laughs> this is always the naive thing when people are, or a few people that I've heard on podcasts say, oh, you know, children's books are easier. So <laughs> how wrong you are, how wrong you are. <laughs> but, um, I thought, okay, maybe maybe I'll try to do a very simple children's book because <laughs> uh, that'll be easy, right? Yeah. Uh, of course, it wasn't. Uh, but it, the amount of workloads in comparison with the, with the comic is a lot less. So um, I I tried to do uh, tried to, to get more, I was more interested in children's books, and I, I completely fell in love with the idea that maybe one day I could illustrate a children's book. I started listening to a lot of podcasts. Uh, the other one, there was another one on the Chris Seals Academy, and I can't remember, by Shauna Tani, uh, if, I, if I'm not butchering her name. Uh, and she interviewed a lot of people that came from animation and went into, into children's books. I was like, this is very interesting. So I'm not completely crazy like this. Is, maybe this is an option. <laughs> <laughs> and then my agent found me. So that's that's when things really took off. Take off for me. Yeah. Remind me who your agent is. Uh, James McGowan in Bookends. He's right. amazing. Yep. Yeah. I know. So like, after after posting all the ads, we do research to find all the agents and uh, figure out everybody's background and everything for the show. And then I always forget it all right as we start. <laughs> I'm already like trying to figure out like you know the next month's folks and do research on on. Yeah. And so I always forget, but yeah, James McGowan. Uh, now, now it's like uh, J M C G O W A N books uh, on, on a bunch of like I can sp spell out all the stuff for you now. Uh, <laughs> you mentioned the name, but get the name the first time is the hard part. Um, so tell me, tell me a little bit about sort of um, like now you have little ones or a little one, but a, another little one on the way. Um, yeah. What? how does that change your view or, or, you know, do you think it changes your view on what picture books should be or how they function? I mean, you, you talked about like, and I, I did the same thing where when I initially got into picture books, I was like, this is going to be easy because it's short. Yeah. And then of course you learned that like the hard part is not the, the length of the book. The hard part is actually how to edit yeah. and how to like be conservative with what you put out uh, as far as word count and images and whatnot, but um, how has your perception changed since having a little one, uh, a um, child? Changed a lot. Um, first of all, uh, I started getting even more books into our house because I really wanted her to like books. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't want to force her, <laughs> but I really wanted to connect uh, with books. And so I got even more books into my hand and I could see what she was connecting and not connecting. Of course, she was only a really small baby when I started, so I don't even remember. Um, I was only doing like really very easy uh, kind of flap books and stuff that she could actually interact, not stories. Yeah. And now that I'm into stories, I can actually see exactly what she likes and doesn't like. I think I can see the stories more through a child's perspective instead of what I, what I would like to do. You know what I mean? Because, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, a lot, a lot of my critique group partners um, uh, in the 12 by 12 group, they told me you, a lot of the critique was you need to see this through a child's perspective. You keep seeing from an adult's perspective. And now with my little one, I can see, I, I think my vision finally, it finally click the whole thing. Of, okay, maybe I need to see it from her perspective. What, what would she like to see? So I try to always think, what would she like to see in a book? Would this kind of resonate with her? Um, so I think that really changed. And She's incredibly inspiring. I think people are sick of me drawing her on my um, on my Instagram because, um, yeah, since I became pregnant, my my brain just got mushed. I don't know if other moms that became artists, moms that became moms or dads, 
uh, felt this, uh, but our brain chemically changes after you become a parent. Yep. Especially, I heard research about moms. I don't know if dads are the exact same. Have you heard no, anything? You heard? I, I mean, you you change whether you want to, whether it's actually chemical uh, in the mm -hmm. brain. I, mean, I know there's there are certain like actual uh, hormonal changes and whatnot that that mm -hmm. affect uh, women in the in the situation. But I bet you there's something that affects a father in that. I bet, I mean, yes, I will tell you, like just emotionally, like I cannot when we had our son. I could watch movies that involved like kids in troublesome situations. Yeah. Uh, and then once we had our son, anything that involved a kid in a troublesome situation is like, nope, I want no part in this. Turn it off. Uh, like, I remember that we, my wife and I started to watch uh, the Baba Duke movie. I don't know if you know that one, but it's a mm -hmm. horror, horror movie. And right away it started with like some kid and we're like nope and we turn it off within like 10 minutes because we just couldn't and i don't know if that's a chemical change or if that's just a like well i'm thinking about my own child and and protection and uh things of the sort um so yes. i want to go back real quick to, to you said that like you understand now what your daughter likes in a book mm -hmm. can you tell me or can you explain in some way for the, mm. for the audience watching or listening what is that? What is like, if you could pin it down into like, obviously like, you know, it may be like cute characters or it might be a silly story or um, is there something that's tangible that you can go like, oh, this is something that your daughter specifically likes and therefore people can translate it, that into maybe other kids do. Yeah, let me think. The books that she's connecting the most at the moment, um, like, you know, Chris, uh, uh, Chris Hawkson, uh he's an Irish illustrator. He did the book, um, it's like a little owl, owl that gets lost from her. It's not the three owls yeah. uh, that everybody keeps asking. It's, the, it's one that a little owl falls on from the tree and then she keeps asking every single animal. Um, no, uh, she gets help from a squirrel, sorry. Um, and the squirrel says, I'll help you find your mommy. And then he goes and shows the, the little um, Oh, is this your mommy? Is this your mommy? Is this your mommy? Yeah. She likes books that she can interact and she can reply to, uh, <laughs> that she can tell the story herself. So I always say to her, so what do you think that's her mommy? And she says, no. And then the other one from Chris Oxen um, is, oh, she loves that one, is Maybe. It's with three monkeys that really want to eat mangoes. So she loves books that are story interactive you know what i mean yeah um that, that makes sense. i didn't even you know what honestly i've never really thought about that idea of like the interactivity at that age at you said two is that yeah. right your daughter yeah, she, yeah, yeah she's she's almost two so yeah 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 um like, i know that there's an age where little kids um don't understand that a cartoon character is a cartoon that they think mm. that real character and then there's there's some age where it switches and they understand oh that's just a drawing of a character or you know that's a person in a costume but prior to that they think that that's a real thing mm -hmm. and in a way that sounds very similar in the sense of like the book is actually talking to them not the book is just talking to a a general audience but there is that interactivity i could understand being like very personal Mm -hmm. kid at that point of like oh they want to know my opinion and exactly me uh or something of the sort that's that's sort of an interesting twist that i've never really thought about um yeah and it's not just um like he likes to uh warn the characters of something's happening and <laughs> i really i really advise on that book of the maybe because she's amazing so just tell very quickly it's just the three monkeys the mother monkey goes away and she tells the monk, the three monkeys, do not go down to the to the to the ground because there's tigers there. Yeah. Do not try to get the the mango tree. And we all know that the monkeys will try to get the mangoes, um, because they're 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 young. <laughs> they really want to uh, get the yummy mangoes. And she can see the tigers hiding. And she tells, she keeps telling the monkey, the tiger, the tiger is there. Aww. So she, she, it's very cute. Um, and don't, don't take her yeah. to a scary movie then, because she. She'd be yelling at the screen the whole time, like, don't go in there. <laughs> I <laughs> yeah. um, that, that, that idea of like, so she's actually like yelling out loud at the book. Yeah. 
that's, <laughs> it's very that's funny. Pretty, that's pretty awesome, honestly. It's very it's the suspension of, of, uh, of disbelief that this is a real, or that the monkeys can hear <laughs> her, her cries, um, or that it would somehow true. change the next time. <laughs> <laughs> You already know and then she wants to read it all over, 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 and over, and over again. She doesn't mind knowing the end of this. She knows the end of the story by now. Yeah. Like it all turns yeah. out okay, right? Yeah, okay. yeah, sure, okay. sure. <laughs> Not telling. <Yeah, sure>. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, I need to get the book. <laughs> it's really good. In a horrible uh, accident. <laughs> um, <laughs> and so, are you writing in in a weird way? Are you writing books now and making books? for you for the publisher for your daughter mm. like who's who is your audience at this point if you had to pick an audience who is your real audience? Hey, that's, a, that's a great question um one book that i'm gonna have on submission very soon i'm really excited about it it's i think i made it for her <laughs> okay but it's not on the interactive because when i wrote that book and I drew it. She was not on that interactive uh, phase yet, uh, so it's actually not interactive. But it's about um, uh, something that parent, all parents relate, which is trying to get your toddler into bed when they're just running away from you, okay. uh, like crazy. So one one night, I just I just call her because she was so cute. She was only like I said she was about thirteen months. So that's around when she starts walking, and I put on her little pajamas, you know, the old the overalls, and. I was trying to say, Marina, come on, come to bed. And she just run around like a little, like a little tiny monster with her pajama list, just giggling away, away from me. And I thought it was the cutest thing ever. So I call her pajama bug. Come here, pajama bug. Um, and I'm like, oh my God, that's something. So I just wrote out that evening. Um, and then I, I, I talked to my agent. So that book was inspired by her. So it's still going to go on submission. Uh, so it's not out yet. Um, in the wild, yeah. like they say. Um, so that, that was for her. And then the- You, you said uh, you wrote that at night? Sorry? You said you wrote that that, that night? Well, Is I that... wrote and then rewrote and then revised okay. and then did the Domi and you know, that, that took a lot <laughs> longer. <laughs> I was gonna say. But I mean, yeah, sorry, I, I wrote the idea. <laughs> I wrote the idea okay. down, no, I didn't write the book in one <laughs> night, no. <laughs> that would be amazing, no. Uh, <laughs> um, and then I spoke to my agent, and then we he really liked the idea, so we work on the dummy. Um, so yeah, the other other ones, the Peekaboo is an interactive book. So that one was definitely made for children her age. Uh, so for the interactive side of it, so it was definitely not for the publisher. It was definitely for the audience. So I fi I finally thought, okay, that's it. I finally <laughs> getting somewhere. Um, so in the book, uh, Peek is a little bunny. I can just draw him her very quickly. Uh, Peek is a little bunny and she has uh, and that that's the bunny that I drew for my car for my daughter. Yeah. That's her. Um, I did like a four season thing for her for her bedroom. Uh, and and then I was like, I really want to draw I really want to do a board book because I was getting into board books with her. Yeah. Uh, an, an interactive one. I said, but I, I would like to find a, a sidekick character for 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 this little bunny. I didn't have a name yet. Uh, so I thought it could be something small, so I kind of just drew, so that's peak. So I just drew something small and I thought maybe a, a guinea pig, because my daughter loves guinea pigs. My my friend Nadia has two guinea pigs and she really loves them. She tries to draw them, it's very, she draws like a little scribble and said, that's the guinea pig. It's like, yeah, that's great. <laughs> it's very cute. Um, so I, I got a little, the little balls are so in proportion, they were very different. And then I was like, oh, what name should I give them? And I thought, peek a boo. So peek and boo. So peek is the bunny and boo is the little um, hamster yeah. or a guinea pig. And, and I was like, okay, now how can I make this <laughs> book? So I could play with the whole peek a boo thing. I told my agent and we hashed ideas and we came with the idea that it's a book where peek is always trying to find boo and in whatever, in whatever setting they are, a farm or their bedroom or um or going on the way going to bed the first book is going to be a bedtime book so it's peak looking for boo doing all the things that the toddlers do on the way to bed oh. um it's very and it's the things that we are now know right because we have a toddler so you know like the pajamas brushing your, or to get a snack then brushing your teeth and 
reading a story. Um, and then, but Boo is actually hiding in every single spread and the toddler has to find it. So that's, that's the whole, and then at the end, Boo finds up, uh, shows up to peek and then they finish the story. So that, that was the, the premise. So that was definitely made as an interactive book. So I hope she likes it. She hasn't seen anything. I'm too nervous that she's not going to like it. And then, you're, you know, I already, you're a harsh you know. critic in the, in the whole thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Two-year-old. Yeah. Because yeah. they don't go back. They're not going to say, oh, this is really nice. Yeah, <laughs> no. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm going to give you a heads up. And this is at least in our experience. Uh, okay. My 10 year old right now also still struggles to get to bed uh, and oh, tries to stall and not brush his teeth. And uh, so just just a warning. Uh, oh, <laughs> now that you have two That's... on the way, or uh, one on the way, you have yeah, uh, yeah. twice the fun, twice the fun <laughs> one of those ages. Um, I think it's a, you know, for a kid, it means you have to shut down for the day, and like they want to be so excited and up and around. I mean, one of the things that I've I've always found fascinating is the type of book that you can read to a kid during the day versus the type of book you can read to a kid at night. Mm -hmm. And there's you know, there is a book that or a type of book that's a calming book that is clearly meant to uh, to like sedate the kid <laughs> and, in a good way, not like it's it's boring, but more so just like. The content is not like the most exciting thing in the world. They're going to turn the page to find out, you know, who's fighting mm -hmm. a situation. Um, yes. But getting that, the 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 idea of uh, the the nighttime book is not the book that I generally write or that I uh, I end up reading or I ended up reading to my son. It was always those uh, those wild uh exciting books and maybe that was not a smart move <laughs> at night like those are the ones i want, wanted to read that like oh look at this twist that happens on the second you know spread or whatever and for my son maybe that's not the brightest idea if you're trying to put him down to sleep at the night um, <laughs> so tell me tell me a little bit about sort of um the 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 writing side because that is one thing that you know when i started out in picture books I definitely had that mentality of like, oh, writing, this is going to be easy because it's short, right? Mm -hmm. Just the pure word count alone made me go, piece of cake. And I have since learned uh, many times over that that's not the case. Um, so what what is your writing like? How much of a challenge is it? Do you have a system to it? Um, you know, like... Do you, do you write a certain amount per day or is it you go in spurts? Right. Um, I find it incredibly challenging. I still find like a primary school kid trying to write, um, especially when I was in my critique group. And, and you know, when my critique, my, I had two critique groups um, with very experienced writers. And it's like, you really do feel intimidated because they do know what they're talking about. They, they you know, most of them were not um, illustrators uh, and they really point out things that I just never thought about it even though I tried to study story and I did you know in storyboards you have to understand story there's just so much there is still so much I need to learn uh, so I do find it quite challenging I find I'm way, I'm way more comfortable illustrated than I am uh, writing so to the to the point that walk is is wordless um, <laughs> <laughs> well, because it's completely wordless, um, because I was struggling with words so much, and then English is not my first language, so that was another challenge. Um, so I told my agent, "Would you mind?" Because uh, in 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 my experience, in, when I was back home in Portugal, we would go to a lot of festivals, um, animation festivals, and most of the animation independent films have actually no 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 words. They are actually completely wordless. Yeah. Not wordless, as you say. There's no there's no there's no lines. So I thought maybe I can tell a story that I on 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 in a way that I'm very familiar, which is um, short films with no words but into a picture book. I hope this made any sense. No, um, that's, I mean, the, looking at some of the visuals that you have online already for it, uh, it makes sense to me in the sense of like, uh, I mean, it's it's weirdly a, a comic and, because there's like comic mm -hmm. panels in it, 
uh, and you know, it's told though in a way where in like, it's not your traditional sort of comic panel. It's it's, uh, but there are beats to it. Mm -hmm. There is, uh, you know, so it's it's not just like here's an image and done. Like you get to follow a story that happens there, yep. uh, which is also a whole other challenge. Like to me, a wordless picture book is probably even harder than a worded picture book because you have nothing to help explain any of those nuances of what someone's thinking or anything of sorts. So you have to capture it all in their expression. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm, I'm sort of floored looking at the visuals for that of like, how did you manage? Cause I just don't know if I could do that. Uh, or if I would have the wherewithal to, to sit there and like nuance a, in a expression to a point where everybody yeah. understands what they're thinking without actually having to say it. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. Is it wherein okay. the like when you wrote that book, did you actually write out a manuscript and it just said, you know, this is what the visuals are? Uh, no. So I did like bullet points of things that I wanted to key moments that I wanted to talk that yeah. I wanted to, to 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 show in the book. Um, I, I wanted the whole synopsis to be written down. Um, but then, so I knew I knew the character had to start at home uh, with the dog, go out into the into the uh, park uh, in in a in a rainy day, and come back on a sunny day. And both characters are oh, not both characters, but the main character is changed. So she, she's changed at the end of the of the book. So I knew that had to happen. And then I had key points like them going up to the hill and falling, uh, the dog getting hurt. I wanted that to be there. I wanted the moment that she stops being so grumpy and starts changing. Yeah. So we start seeing the emotional change on her. So I wanted that to be there. But I didn't write the actual, this is going to happen, this is going to happen. I just said like little bullet points. I should, I would love to find the, so, cause I would love to see it myself now. Um, how does it look like? Uh, and I told my agent uh, and he said, okay, I like this point. I like the, how the story is going. It was still very uh, not kids uh, from, from a kid's point of view because this was, so this was 2021. So that's, this was before my, my daughter was born. So I was still on that range. <laughs> it's so funny how we completely changed. Uh, and so he helped me change it a bit more to something that kids would relate to because I think, I think a lot of people write, a lot of us that are starting write stories about uh, from our perspective, like, oh, the kid was working so hard at home. They didn't want to come out of the house of like, that, that doesn't happen in the child's world. <laughs> completely <laughs> never happens. <Yeah. It's> always, <laughs> or, it's always the, the like writing from an adult point of view and just putting it in the, in the mind of a kid, but that doesn't hold up. Um, yeah. It's, it's like, just because it has a, a superficial treatment of a child in the design, in no way does that reflect that it is actually like what a kid would think in that situation. And not to say mm -hmm. that kids think in a, a like less mature way or they're that they're, you know, somehow not as smart as an adult, but they just definitely have a different point of view because of world experience. Yeah. And like yeah. what's what's new to them is not new to us. And so we may uh, equate those those new things to like uh or what may be old hat to us is new to a kid. And if you don't get that correct, then it can throw everything off. Mm -hmm. um, the, uh, uh, the sort of switch from animation into story. I mean, one of the things that I remember in animation was always talking about beats. Mm. Like, oh, you just beat here. And there's like, I don't know if anybody ever explained to you, because no one ever explained to me, like, or I've never heard of an official, like, a beat is this many seconds, or a beat is... <laughs> It's always just this ambiguous, like, hey, you need to add more time here, or you need to hold this shot for longer. And then you translate that into a kidlet, and you only have a certain amount of pages, right? Yeah. You know, you know whatever it may be. It may be your 32 page count, which is technically, you know, what, 24 uh, pages minus the in mat back matter. Mm hmm. But, um, do you, does some of that like knowledge from animation and understanding the like rhythm in which a story has to be told, does that carry over in the same way for you? Are there things that you had to learn about sort of that pacing and the structure of uh, picture books that sort of makes you think differently about how to tell a story? 
Uh, I think me, I'm very thankful that for some godly reason I was in storyboards for two, two, two and a half years yeah. because we did have to learn story, um, <coughs> especially like you, you're, you're given a manuscript, so we don't, we don't work from completely from, from nothing. Um, somebody already wrote the manuscript, but we need to understand what is an important moment in the story what's the theme of the story so this is all things that we all also talk in picture books um like what is you know who is the main character how is this affecting the main character how is the team how is the team uh, affecting the story um so i think if i didn't have those two and a half years of storyboards and uh really had to you know talk talk with directors people that were really experienced in 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 the studio that i was working with or, or even with clients um that we had to work with and, and the retakes they were giving me i don't think i would have um see i still think i'm learning a lot but yeah. i think i had a nice little how do you call it? a nice little landing into kidlit so definitely helped a lot um knowing story and knowing the three acts, then I, you know, what, what happens on, during the three acts, we, because we do use that in, in Kidlit, even though the acts are like the first act is like the first page. Yeah. And then, you, you know, you change immediately. The, the third act is like the last page. Uh, so you don't really, you know, then the, the second act is, is most of the book. Um, but I, yeah, no, I definitely think that, that animation, uh, in, in in the storyboard years, not in the animation. Uh, when I was was when I was an anim, I think anim being an animator really helped me with drawing, uh, understanding proportions, understanding um, how a character should look. Because we have to draw the character, we ha you have to draw in so many different shows, in so many different uh, styles. But you have to morph into those styles. Yeah. You have to be um, flexible. <laughs> very flexible yeah and you have to learn how to draw a character that somebody on, on, on the other side of the world drew and then the next year you have to learn how to draw other set of characters or whatever so that taught me a lot about proportions about keeping a character on style we got a lot of uh what do you call it? the character's not on model the character's not on model yeah a lot of those retakes so you really get you know stamp into you <laughs> that you have to to understand um drawing drawing characters and drawing emotions and drawing well, movements so that yeah that was really helpful too you can see it in the main character of walkie the the sort of animation influence that's in there too like the the mm -hmm. expressions and the proportions that are in there allow for a lot more flexibility as far as like how the character can move and the especially like the the legs and the limb proportions you can mm -hmm. see that like oh that's where this like animation sort of uh history in your work shows up uh in the character like i can go like oh this is a character that i can very easily see um moving of some sort and actually being you know uh not static on the page uh without you having to even draw uh movement the, the style of the character registers and, and sort of resonates in that manner. Yeah. Um, oh, that's great. The, the, uh, the, the, one of the things that I, I've, I guess I've never really asked anybody on here, and I, I think this is maybe a, a poignant question for those that are interested in pursuing Kidlet as a career. Um, are there tangential skills or types of art that you think are beneficial for people to take? in order to get into kidlit so like talking about animation mm -hmm. and talking mm -hmm. about understanding storyboarding like a storyboarding class i think probably would be huge for most people to yes. go take understand sort of the the rhythm and the beats that go along with how to best tell a story and what a point of view is and sort of like camera angles because you don't want just the same camera angle through the entirety of a book most of the time uh mm -hmm. static and so like understanding oh we're going to do an over the shoulder or uh, mm -hmm. uh you know uh, learning the 180 rule, all those kinds of odds and ends. Um, for anybody that doesn't know the 180 rule, go look it up. Because um, <laughs> it does help in stories uh, and picture books and understanding. I assume you know what that is, right? Yeah. I'm not. <laughs> if I didn't, well, I would get fired right away. <laughs> uh, it's a, uh, we can, my wife was in animation too. And like, we can spot those in an instant, like, oh, something's wrong here. What is it? Oh, of course they broke the 180. Um, so. <laughs>
scene animation and storyboards or uh, we worked with a company where you did kind of everything and okay. so it was you know one day you're doing storyboards the next day you're doing uh character design and backgrounds and you're animating and so it just depended on sort of the the job uh or the task of the day um but we we understand a lot of those principles because we just had to learn it on the fly while we were animating mm, um, exactly but uh are there are there art skills that you think are sort of tangential or that are important for someone to learn with the intention of aiming towards kid lit as an illustrator you mean yeah. As a, um, yeah. yes i i think i think one because sometimes people ask me uh what courses should they take if they if they had to pick one and i think the one that really changed the way i draw was gesture drawing um because i was an animator but uh and in fairness i should under i should have understood gesture a lot more um but for some reason when i was drawing on my own uh at home my my drawings were still very stiff and i didn't and not very appealing for a very long time and we had a little art competition in our in our studio and my colleagues had amazing work really appealing really expressive and it's like why is my work so stiff so uh why my characters look lifeless and it was it was so hard to pinpoint why is my character lifeless yeah or why is it not appealing it's such a a hard concept to grasp right but i think it was to do a lot with the gesture was not real realistic so the character could be a cartoon but the gesture was not coming from reality and I think that um, in, as animators, you have to learn just the drawing, but very easily when you work on programs like Toon Boom and 3D and whatever, you start getting a little um, rusty on the drawings because you, you kind of move rigs and you move, uh, you get very technical. Yeah. But drawing, actually drawing uh, a gesture uh, really, really helped me. I did a course with Schoolism called uh, Gesture Drawing. <laughs> I don't remember the teacher. Uh, but it completely changed the way I draw, completely changed. And I would, I would advise so much um, more than character design, more than anything. I think gesture drawing, and then you can do go into the gesture drawing or, or whatever. I, I, guess, I guess I we shouldn't, we shouldn't say good this, do this first and then after whatever uh, <laughs> comes first. Um, yeah, I think gesture drawing is one of those. And um, yeah uh maybe maybe uh because that, that, that gesture drawing goes into posing and there's a lot of, of courses about posing um you probably know svs learn do you uh yes yeah so they they have a nice course about character posing so that's also nice and that that comes from animation because jake was in animation jake parker so yeah i think that from from that animation world it's it's very helpful for anybody getting into kid lit illustration i think was um the the idea of like gesture drawing now was that gesture drawing with characters or was that gesture drawing of oh like uh life drawing yeah it was li was life drawing so uh i i tried to then teach the course later so it was very like there was a model uh on screen if this was all online yeah. And we, we, one great exercise that, that he gave us was um, if you had a character that is uh, uh, jumping, what, what in one line, if you had just to pick one line, what would you do? Yeah. So that character would look like he's jumping. So you, you, if I had to draw it here, you of course wouldn't do this, right? So that's not, that's not drawing. That's not anybody jumping. But maybe like this character that I have here jumping, you can feel the energy of the of your pencil going jump. So I don't remember what what pose she was, but then I can from then I know that this is the main force. So like to talk about the line of action. Line of action is so important in animation, right? Um, and if you, as you know, <laughs> if you have line of action in your drawings, you, you can kind of then build from there. So if I go from there, I know this is the big energy that I want to take. Oops from my from my oops from my drawing <laughs> so then if i wanted to <laughs> to make her draw to jump then i knew that she had to you, then you could draw, we could draw whatever way we wanted but he really wanted us to distill as much as we can as much as we could from a pose that she was doing in live drawing and make it into uh you know then a character jumping and you could do you, you have the superficial sort of style after the fact are you are you someone that, yeah. that 
draws a lot on a daily basis? That I, if I draw? Yeah. Oh God, yes. Every day. <laughs> what nerd. Uh, it, it's, is it always drawing for picture books or do you do any other sort of um, exploratory drawing? Uh, it's mostly for picture books or for comics or for... Um, I love pretending to do character design like I'm doing now. I love to pretend that I that I have a character that I'd like to put into different poses and situations. So that makes me happy. <laughs> Somehow yeah. that relaxes me <laughs> when I'm drawing. Um, yeah, it's mostly for picture books. I wouldn't do, I wouldn't go outside and draw landscapes. It wouldn't be, it wouldn't be something that I like or, uh, and I'm terrible with sketchbooks. Um, I always felt very guilty and very much of an imposter because I, I, I just don't keep a, <laughs> just don't keep a sketchbook at all. And I feel like, all my friends that are amazing illustrators, they all have really, really impressive sketchbooks. <laughs> but for some reason, it just intimidates me still. Um, it, it's, I don't more. have one either. It's, I, don't, I don't think it's everybody needs one. I think, I mean, I assume you sketch on things. You sketch on paper. Sometimes yeah. you sketch on the iPad. But like yeah. the, the format of a traditional... Uh, uh, sketchbook i feel like some people love them and some people just like to me i don't like the idea of having to have everything contained in a lovely little book mm. that's one it's a lot of pressure uh, yes because if you screw something up you screw something up uh <laughs> but two i also worry about sort of like uh the always having it on hand and um most of the time i don't even sketch I, I do, this is my sketching. And that's why I like, people always ask me about like, well, you always do finished stuff on Gab and Doodle. And it's like, nah, this isn't, I mean, yes, it ends up being finished, but it's not, uh, to me, this is sketching in the same way I'm just mm -hmm. material. So um, I, I, I'm not the follower of the sketchbook protocol. Right, that way. I think this is me. I don't know if you can see anything, but this is the drawings I do on paper. I yep. do thumbnails, so. And I think uh, being in storyboards really helped me to get back on paper because we had to thumbnail, which is, again, it's another thing that you have to do in, uh, or helps to do in Kidlit to thumbnail your, your book before you get into the, the page. Yeah. Um, so you thumbnail really small and horrible. So it doesn't matter. I don't think anybody can understand what's here, <laughs> but I do. <laughs> I like the uh, small and horrible. You add yeah. the word horrible. I mean, I understand, I understand the sentiment. <laughs> I have a feeling your sketches are not that horrible. That some people will look at them and go, "Wow, these are amazing!" But I get the I get the gist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. So now that you're in this this kidlet world, what is the what is the thing that's the hardest? Like, what's one thing oh. wish someone had said? Oh, this is the thing you should bone up on because you're going to struggle with this on a daily basis. And it, mm. could, it, could be, it could be the actual like art making or the writing or things, but it also could be soft skills like just time management or those kind of odds and ends. Um, oh, goodness. I think, I think the hardest for me is still to find out. Um, okay. Finding a, finding a really good story. Well, but that's that's I think that's everybody's <laughs> everybody's uh, challenge. Uh, I, even though I say that I'm writing a bit more towards a child's uh, vision, I still think that a lot of my stories still don't hit the mark. Um, when I show it to my agent, he's like, "Oh, this is not really going to work." Or I'm even nervous with that book, the pajama book, if it's going to sell because I still think it's not. Uh, very, uh, I know this This is hard because it's going on submission. Uh, maybe it's because I, I, I finished that book in October and then I look at it and I'm like, oh my God, I don't think it's ready. Uh, or, or I don't think I did a good job. Um, I think coming up with really good ideas is really hard. But then, okay, after that, let me see what's the worst, the, the most difficult part for me. Uh, I like everything. <laughs> Trying to think. The deadlines are way better than in animation as well, which is <laughs> so much easier. Oh my God, the, anim the animation deadlines were so hard. 
Um, the thumbnailing. The thumbnailing is fun and at the same time the hardest. I really cannot have any music on. I can't. And the pressure. Sometimes I I can't hear anything around me because the pressure of coming up with an interesting uh, spread that day um, is so is so hard. Um, I don't know if you feel the same. Do you feel the same? I, the the doing the dummy books. I feel like it depends on it depends on the book. One of the challenges that I have is a lot of the books that I've done with Page Street uh, in particular mm -hmm. have had a lot of words. And oh, not not only not not that there's like a high word count, but more so that there is a um, a lot of designing a page to make because it's, it's when I first got the manuscripts and I, I love the books and uh, so the author hears this they're not I'm not complaining about it but it's more so um, there are like 15 different stories happening on a single spread and right depending on what line you're reading you have to see something different so like most of the spreads in the books that I've done for them are not a single moment it's like five different moments and so it's a little bit more like a uh, a puzzle uh, uh, that has to be solved uh, by you know designing and figuring out uh, pagination and figuring out the sort of uh, the reading of the page and that is the thing that probably is the the hardest for me on that mm -hmm. end of mm -hmm. not, it's not the drawing stuff and I think this is probably the same for you like once you know what you need to draw that oh, yeah. probably is relatively easy to come to like oh I can just now that I know I need this character doing this here we go and done um, yeah. but it's figuring out like okay where do I place the character first in order to make sure the story's being read in the order that it's supposed to be read in and not some artificial uh, sort of um, structure that I'm applying to it that doesn't allow the the narrative to work in the proper mm -hmm. um, yeah I, I agree I completely agree yeah that's the challenge and, and that also just depends on sort of who your uh, or what the story is and how it works but um, the storyboarding, or I don't even do thumbnails really. I just go straight to large scale, which mm -hmm. is maybe not the brightest idea because <laughs> <laughs> all the effort that I put in, and then I find out, oh, this one doesn't work. Um, but I just like drawing bigger, and it's partially because of, of Procreate, because I sketch on Procreate. Mm -hmm. The ability to just draw bigger right from the beginning has always sort of helped me because uh, I can just, you know, I'm not limited by the the uh, having to redraw stuff so if i just need to uh copy and paste i can copy and paste and yeah yeah no, i know that's been my sort of go-to in something like that um <laughs> is there is there a part that you absolutely love like what's your favorite if you had to pin down and someone said like okay you get uh you know you have to pick your favorite part to work on for the rest of your life oh Hmm. I think I think creating characters from scratch, thinking about how a character would look like. It's so funny because that's character designing. Yeah. <laughs> but it's exactly what I'm doing now. I mean, I just feel comfortable uh, uh, playing with shapes and seeing how can I play with shapes to see how a character could could look like. Uh, I, I I find that really I love that bit. Uh, it's one of my favorite favorite um, parts of the. And and that's only the beginning of the book. And then I, I'm not saying that I don't love the rest. I really like, and it's just the thumbnail is really hard. But yeah, I think my favorite thing is coming up with how a character would look like. Yeah. Uh, or, or a group of characters. I love that. It's one of my favorite playtimes. So it's playtime. That's how I find it. That's, uh, <laughs> to me, that's one of those hard ones where it's like, I, I know that it's, I, I like, I like designing characters, but I also know that. I have had so many times where I've designed a character and then realized later, like, oh, I should have done it this way and not that way. <laughs> After the fact. And that's the one that always sort of hurts uh, for us. I'm always questioning, like, is this the right move now or <laughs> is this the right move that will work later? And sometimes my idea of what works now is not actually what the book needs to be um, in the end. And it's sort of like the equivalent of, I love to put uh, stripes and plaid on characters. And even when I was like working in animation, I was like, oh, that's what I really want to do. I want to put stripes and plaid on people. And then you find out like 
bad idea. <laughs> Unless you're doing something like chowder, uh, where it's like you can have that texture that's masked off. Uh, bad idea. <laughs> yes. Very hard to animate. <laughs> is there uh, um, is there a character that you've drawn that you're like you've looked back at it later and gone like that was a that was not smart of me? Ooh. Uh, for a picture book. Oh, let me think. Uh, let me think. Let me think. I have to look because sometimes I completely uh, my my brain my pregnant brain is very much a mush at the moment. <laughs> my pregnant brain looking uh, running after a toddler is a big mush. Um, I I drew some characters. Uh, on a chapter book series uh, a long time ago um, it was called Elshire Fixers uh, and I was only brought in as an illustrator after another illustrator already illustrated the books okay. um, and they wanted they, 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 told, they told me something that I absolutely hated hearing but anyways they gave me a job uh, at the time that's how my style looked like, and they were not wrong. I just said I didn't like to hear it. Uh, they said that my style looked like a Disney style, uh, which I I hated it. <laughs> didn't want to be, uh, you know, associated. Didn't want to like associated. That. Not, not that I have anything against Disney. I love Disney, but I didn't want my style to be. Oh, you're the girl that draws like a Disney style. Uh, it's not very different. It's not very. It's not very similar to the style I have now. But uh, I had to kind of follow similar to what the other girl had before me which her drawings were beautiful but hers were way simpler and i went really complicated because i didn't understand how chapter books how small the printing is uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, and i gave i when i drew the characters I was like brilliant i love the characters <laughs> and then it's just so much detail oh my god that book took me so long i mean sorry it didn't take me long it took me long long hours but it, i had to draw at night i had to all do all the shading i had to do all the hairs and everything because i thought when i was doing the character design oh this looks great <laughs> i didn't realize i had to draw i think it was, it was 40 drawings in in three months and it was some of them were full leads uh page not spreads but page yeah. and some of them were spots some of them were vignettes but the, the the detail was ridiculous and then when i saw the books i was <laughs> you barely can see any detail it's like okay well, not only that but it was probably printed on like basically uh not quite newsprint but not high quality stock yeah. for a chapter book and then all that work that you put in like just kind of turns into mush yes in the the uh that's when i was doing editorial work that was the problem of of any time you did stuff that was um for a newspaper like you just it's gonna come out looking awful in the end yeah. and pr primarily just because you know the stock that they print on and that's it like if you don't if you don't attend to that then it it can look like a nightmare yeah um yeah it just look it looked really bad i i don't i don't know i don't like even i have the books and i i kind of feel like they're just a big blur which is so sad because i I really killed myself doing it. It was my first time, <laughs> but um, yeah. <laughs> I'm, uh, I don't even, see, you've been drawn this whole time and like, I'm still like, I'm making flora here, trying to figure out like if I put trees in, I don't know what <laughs> these to fit. And I don't even know what the image is gonna be yet. Uh, I'll, I'll figure it out as I go along, but uh, I think I, Boy. Are you are you thinking about the the whole pa St. Patrick's Day team or yeah. yet or? So I'm gonna do I'm gonna do something that's like Ireland and St. Patrick's Day with maybe a rainbow or something that like sort of the the equivalent of like the the pot of gold situation. Yeah. But uh, what I don't want to do is I don't want to make just a big old green piece. <laughs> and so I'm trying to pick something <laughs> an interesting palette to play with and sort of these earthier tones and things of the sort. But I'm trying to figure out like if I make this forest. How do I want this forest to look? And where do I want the you know, like? Because I want to make a little cottage yeah. here. That's sort of, I don't know. I'll figure it out. We'll get there. I'm just gonna start putting stuff down, and we'll we'll figure it out as we go along. Um, so tell me, uh, now now that you've been in the industry for a while, mm -hmm. and have a lovely agent who is yeah. uh, you know helping you all along the way. Yeah. Uh, looking back. Are there things that um, 
decisions that sort of happened that you are surprised you made not that they're bad or good or anything of the sort but you know like the, the equivalent of jumping into uh kidlet from animation there is a connection there but there's also there's a scary factor there like animation sometimes you have contracts that last for a long time or you're working mm -hmm. in a studio or what have you and then all of a sudden you're like well now i'm dependent on books and you never know where the next book is coming from or mm -hmm. there are things that like you know life decisions that helped make this happen but you're sort of surprised at the uh the leap of faith that you took uh, great question um hmm. when i jumped into kidlit i didn't realize that um that i would have a bit more freedom and i know this sounds crazy maybe i don't know um when you come from animation uh the deadlines are for yesterday yep. so like so as you know it's like everything is really fast um you work in a big team you're a little part of the puzzle uh you have to deliver 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 and you're i kind of feel like on my last year uh i almost burn out uh because i was working nine to six uh it was really like even though it's something i love it's something that was uh killing me inside a little bit yeah and taking me the joy of drawing so when I went into Kidlit, I didn't think I want to go into Kidlit because I want uh, a bit more freedom on my deadlines and a bit more freedom on my creativity. I just thought I just like books, kids' books, and I just want to tell my own stories. But then what I realized is that I really feel at home. I mean, my work-life balance is the best it's ever been. And that was the biggest surprise I, I got. I decided to become a full-time um, children's book illustrator when my daughter was born so i i dropped animation because i went on maternity leave yeah. Yeah. um and then i thought i don't think i can go back again and work nine to six and not see my daughter i mean that's just not what i want in my life um my parents had to work very hard when they were very when we were young and nothing like we love our parents so much but we didn't see them very often we were home um uh, sometimes alone for a few hours before they come home yeah. Or we would have to be in our minders, or we would have to go, uh, we had to stay in school a bit longer. And that made me, you know, that remind, you know, that, those memories come back uh, that you don't want to do the same, even though they had no choice. That's just, that's just how it is. And that's how it, the life is. So most people today, yeah. they have to work those hours and they can't see their kids for many hours. Um, and I just thought, I don't want to do that. So when uh, when i had my daughter and then i had time to think about even though i was sleep deprived <laughs> um i thought no this is it i think this is the kick that i needed in my that i needed to just drop animation and just try to pursue just kidlit because so i was in kidlit in animation during the day i was in i was in animation and then in the evenings i would illustrate so counting to bananas was still illustrator while I was in animation, um, which now I think it's crazy. I, <laughs> you really know how much energy you have when you don't have kids, honestly, uh -huh. or how much how much free time you have when you don't have kids. Oh, I have a whole evening in front of me, no responsibilities, no nothing. I can just draw and while I watch TV. Oh, the, the you know, <laughs> so much free time. Um, <laughs> but so i started in kidlit on 2020 is really 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 recent it's only three years uh and i only went full time in 2022 so that's really recent that's only almost two years um uh, and i didn't realize that it's gonna that gave me so much freedom i can so i don't work all day um i i am with my daughter in the mornings until 11 because i want to spend time with her and because we can't find the crash in ireland the crash situation is horrible uh, it's just no, no. I was looking since she was three, since I was three months pregnant. Wait, look. If you believe it, for a crash for her. Since that? I was. <coughs> Excuse me. What is a crash? Oh, sorry, a Montessori or um, oh, okay. a school. Okay. Sorry. Uh, so what we since I was three months pregnant, I was emailing places. Do you have a place for her? Do you have a place for her? No, we only have for 2025, 2024. Like this is ridiculous. It's only 2022. There's just a shortage, especially since COVID. There was a a lot of them closed. Uh, so, anyways, we couldn't find. And I thought, okay, anyways, I don't want to. If I can, I I would like to spend some time with her, and then I'll bring it to 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 the crash of the month. Sorry. 
um, we couldn't find anything. So we found a minder that could come after she was almost five months. Um, and I had deadlines to start hitting, like walkies and other books that I had under contract, like the elephant book. And uh, we got a minder to be with her for four hours a day. So she would come here into the house uh, and I would work in my studio. So she was only five months, so she didn't really, she couldn't tell that I was in the house. So that was easy <laughs> at that point. <laughs> Well, it wasn't easy for me because she cried a lot for the first two weeks and it broke my heart. Um, someone else has <laughs> I just, I don't, today. What? Is that someone else has to deal with it today and you wanted to be... I know. At the same time, you can hear her crying while he's trying to work. It's absolutely heartbreaking. I almost dropped it. I said to my partner, that's it. I'm not doing it. He's like, you are doing it. You're going back to work. That's what you wanted. So you are doing it. Um, and... Now what we have is that she goes to a, a minder's house. She still can't find a, a school for her, uh, which is crazy. She's almost two. Um, we, we found one for 2025. No, yeah, it's 2025. If you can believe it, I remember it's crazy about that. Like, and it wasn't as much of an issue in the area that we live, but people who like had to book their daycare before their kid was even born, and like they had to plan that stuff so far in advance that it just seems so ridiculous. Yeah. But, uh, the uh, so, so I'm I'm gonna switch gears here a little bit topic wise just okay. to, to get into the the life mode because you're talking about sort of the, the life side of things uh, and I'm gonna really switch topics so I'm coming to Ireland mm -hmm. this summer yeah you know, there might be a weekend that I can skirt away over to Dublin mm -hmm. I need tips as someone oh. who grew up there. Uh, and someone who lives there now, what are the what are the things that uh, I should be like? What what should I go see? Essentially, the non touristy okay. trap stuff. Okay, so definitely don't fall into the Temple Bar trap. <laughs> That's where everybody goes. Into the what? Uh, you know, Temple Bar is like in the center of Dublin. There's a small little area. Um, okay. It's like a very old old uh oh god i'm not the best person because i'm portuguese so i wouldn't be the best person to describe how temple bar came about but uh it's a very old uh area it's only i don't even know what's the end. it's very small you can walk from side to side in like 10 minutes okay so it's really small um and it has a very famous pub called temple bar uh and everybody wants to go to that pub everybody wants to take a picture taking a picture is fine the pub the pub is beautiful right and you see lots of people taking pictures um but don't get a pint there the pints are extremely expensive and the whole temple bar area is extremely <laughs> expensive so that's a complete tourist trap uh what i would advise to see in dublin um besides so the city itself is beautiful i uh, hope what, what, what time of the year are you coming uh, uh in june and july oh okay. Okay, so hopefully you have some nice weather. I hope. Yeah. <laughs> so you don't need you don't need to get a you know you don't need to get a car or anything. You can walk everywhere. Dublin is the center is really small. You have the Guinness Store factory that everybody likes to go. I, I kind of like to go, in, especially because on the top you have a, a big um, you have a, 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 a site. You can see the, the city from the top, so it's really pretty. Um, so that's one. Uh, let me see. If you like, do you like history? Uh, yeah. Yeah, so I know this is going to sound weird, but there's a, a, a jail called Kilmainen Jail. Uh, so I went there three times, I think, on my first year. And it's, it explains, so it's not, it doesn't, doesn't just show the, the, the jail, it actually explains the political history. And as you know, the Irish only became independent uh, over 100 years ago. So it's all very fresh. Um, in their minds and and in their in their history, so the Kilmaine Jail has really nice um, exhibitions, and then you have Phoenix Park, which has deers. If your son is coming, you can go and feed the deers. It's very cute. You have a big Dublin Zoo, uh, and beautiful green areas. And then if you want to come out a little bit of Dublin, <laughs> my partner is always mocking me. He's like, Jesus, you always bring everybody here, but you know it's not too far from Dublin if you're staying in Dublin for a very short time. But the the area is called Glendalough. Um, and it's in Wick it's in Wicklow, and Wicklow is called it's it's said to be the Garden of Ireland. It's absolutely gorgeous. Um, I love Wicklow. I've hiked there many many times with friends, um, and I love coming. I go, love going to Glendalough. They have two lakes, and it's just beautiful. Um, so I say that. Holt, you can see 
How did Sorry. you end up in Ireland coming from Portugal? Was how it just I... work? What? How did you like end up in Ireland? Yeah. Uh, work. <laughs> yeah. I I applied uh, because I finished. There was there was work in Portugal, but the economy was very bad at the time. Uh, it was during the crash of two thousand and eight. Everywhere in the world, as you yeah. know, it was a massive crash. Uh, but uh, 23 year old me uh, naively thought this is just happening in Portugal let's go somewhere else <laughs> and I really wanted to travel um, there was animation jobs but all the animation jobs were about three months and they were not paying very well so it's like my dream was to work on a big studio uh, and with a, a longer contract in three months yeah. so I applied to like 40 or something um, animation industry uh, studios and they all said no or they said you know we're not interested or you're not good enough or or we're not hiring or uh, and then this studio uh, boulder media um said yes rob cullen said yes you can come uh, and that's it <laughs> that's all it's done. that's why i came and then i didn't have work after a year but i already met my partner by then who's now the father of my two daughters so <laughs> uh so yeah so we i just stayed i just love i love ireland so um, yeah. The one thing that I always find fascinating, and it's, it's, I, I don't know how to wrap my head around it a hundred percent is how flexible everybody in Europe is to like, just move to another country and right. ju just the idea of like, just, yeah, I'm going to move to a whole new country. And I'm, I'm wondering like, is it me being, uh, anxious about change or is it actually it's easier there or is it you know like is it literally just the united states is as big as some of europe <laughs> and so like going to a new state is the equivalent in the united states um yeah it's 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 just fascinating to me that people can just be like yep i'm just gonna go move that's where the job is and like <laughs> you, have, you get a whole new currency you have like your you know if you're there on a, uh, some sort of visa or something of the sort like just mind blowing to me because I am so, uh, I'm such a homebody. That's what <laughs> I think, I think that uh, because it, if you are inside the European Union, it's easy to travel between countries because you don't have, you don't need a visa. So that's a big, big, big help. We don't need a visa to, to go to another country. Um, and then because we all learn English and I think the main language speak spoken in, in, um, Europe would be French, English, uh, like everybody would learn in school, right? So thankfully I did come to a country where the main language is English, so I already knew it very poorly, but I, I knew it at the time. So that really helped. Um, uh, and I, I, I always thought that that was, the, you know, you changing to a different state is the same as changing to a different country in, in Europe because you you guys if you change to a different state it's like a different country you're so far away because well, americans huge there's that but there's it's not like the currency change there's not a language change i mean there's 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 like nuances to language like you know you, the i don't remember what the word was that you said for uh for a montessori type school oh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, but like we might have like oh that's not the term that people use in a certain state but it's it's still like there's some pretty dramatic changes. Like even the fact that you had to learn English early mm. on in school, like that's just not something that we do on a regular basis, or at least not my experience. Um, and so it's it's fascinating to me, just the, the like flexibility of folks in Europe to be able to just move on a dime like that and uh, mm. or move on a whim to a new location yeah. and not be scared out of their wits uh but that's not my mo <laughs> part of it, part of it, i'm a little wimp let's, let's put let's put it in, in real terms i'm a wimp um, i think i think when you live in a small country like portugal i think um you just want to get out which I, it sounds horrible because i love my i love home i'm i'm an absolute home bird so you would actually never imagine that would be the, part, the kind of person that would leave home yeah. but at 23 something happened to my head and i thought no nope, that's it i'm going I don't know. I, I love my parents. I, I wouldn't I wouldn't even go on sleep um pajama parties or anything because I was just terrified of leaving my parents and now I'm outside the country for fifteen years. So <laughs> um yeah. <laughs> are there are there uh are there great uh no, well I'll change okay. I'm trying to think of the question. 
how to phrase this. Um, are there times where you get to go back home and you like miss Portugal or is it like, is Ireland really your home now? Um, I think Ireland is becoming more and more my home uh, in stages. It was really hard at the beginning to go home and get the ticket back to Ireland. I would cry and cry and cry. The, 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 the goodbyes at the airport were absolutely heartbreaking because you had that feeling that you would, you would, I would see my, my mom or my dad in the airport. And the minute you cross to the other side of the, the door, this is the closest physically I am to them, but it's the furthest away in time yeah. I am to them because it's going to take me another three months. And three months is nothing. Like We are very lucky. I'm not in Australia or I'm not in America. I'm not that far away from Portugal. Portugal is literally a two hour and a half flight to, uh, you know, it's really small, right? <laughs> I used to go home every three months because I was so homesick. Um, so at the beginning it was horrible and then it started getting better when I met my partner and then it started getting even better when we bought the house. So I started getting a bit more, uh, feeling more at home and definitely now with my daughter, I really feel at home I, to the point that I told my my partner we had elections in Portugal last week um, and it's not going well. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. going very uh, far right. And, 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 well, we don't know yet the results, yeah. but um, because uh, we're they're still <clears throat> waiting for our votes, the immigrant votes on the twentieth of March. But uh, I real and I can't vote in Ireland because I need to be an Irish citizen. And I know more about the Irish politics now than I know about Portugal. I try to find. Uh, a friend of mine gave me a lot of the debates and uh, online, so I could follow. And but I felt so out of out of place. I tried to vote. I, of course, it's an absolute. Uh, it's 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 a right that you have that you have to use. Yeah. Uh, but I, I I understand more the politics in Ireland now, and I think it affects now my two daughters. I mean, now I have two half Irish, half Portuguese daughters, and I'm not voting in the country where they live. So now I feel like I need to get double nationality because you can have double. Uh, you can have uh, the Portuguese and the Irish together. One doesn't take the other. Because if I had to take the Portuguese one, I wouldn't. I, I want to be Portuguese till I die. <laughs> but uh, yeah. um, now that I know I can, I can I, I know that I have the two daughters, I think I really need to get the citizenship. And now I feel like I'm more at home. And I think the other reason is that most of my friends left the country uh, because we all left, uh, during, or most of us left. Or, you know, you don't keep in touch as much with people after 15 years. Things change. In inevitably, things change. So I don't feel like I have as much connections as I have in Portugal. Sadly, it really makes me very sad. Because even when I go home, it's only like a few days. So you don't have time to see everybody. So those connections only stay if you're very strong about staying online. or. Um, but if you don't meet people very often things start to fizzle it out which is really sad it's a it's a really annoying and sad fact and after 15 years i feel like i have more friends here than i have back home which makes me very sad but oh. it's the truth so it's the truth it's it's uh things change it's it's the equivalent of you know uh thinking about when you said it was only two hours i was like <laughs> i spend more time flying down to my parents in a different state than you do <laughs> Um, is that crazy? But you know, you we move on. But the uh, w one of the questions I have for you is is sort of what is the when you when you first move to a new country? Because one of the things I deal with uh, with the group that I teach, I, I teach a lot of um, uh, seniors mm -hmm. generally at the end of their college experience, and one of the things that always comes up is that idea of like you're about to leave and you're becoming a a full-blown adult and you're walking out into the world um, and there's always the question of like how do you maintain a group of of friends and how do you maintain the ability to sort of have a critique group and things that go along with that experience of school and whatnot and I'm wondering when you first moved uh, to the uh, Emerald Isles uh, mm -hmm. the, I, I got real real technical there with that terminal uh, <laughs> very good, you know, very good. First move there um how did you how did you find the groups that you you know the the art friends and the the people obviously you had work mm -hmm. but 
there other like means that you relied on to get your network of friends or was it all primarily uh, work? it was all primarily work <laughs> because uh, in animation people are lovely and i was very lucky in the studio that i was in i mean everybody they're still my friends most the people that i meet now even though i'm not in the industry anymore uh they're still my friends i still get to hear from them we still connected the way that I got to meet new people, I was terrified, right? Because I had a whole group of people in Portugal and then all of a sudden it was zero, yeah. zero in Ireland. I mean, how the hell am I going to make friends now? I mean, I was still 23, so I was still young. But, um, but what we tried to do, and I don't know if it's as easy now today, uh, like you would be in the studio, but being in the studio was not enough. So on Fridays, we'd always go out for a pint. Um, and I always made a point to going. Even though I did not understand the words that anybody said, because their accents were very hard. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, some of my best friends now, their accents are so strong. Even my partner, um, <laughs> he's from Galway, but he's uh, so that's on the west side, uh, west coast of of Ireland. But his dad is from Donegal, so that's the north, and he has a mixed, weird accent. So actually, the first night that we met, I didn't understand a word that he said. Um, but we, we clicked somehow and I, I knew that it's what I said, you just nod and pretend like you got it. Yeah. Just yeah. Like, oh. We actually, we actually wrote each other's name on a piece of paper and his last name is Boyle. And I thought, boy, who the hell is called boy? That's such a stupid name. Um, <laughs> but he saved that paper. We had it framed in the house. Now it was a really nice present that he gave me one of the, <laughs> one of these days. Uh, but, um, I found the Irish accent really hard, but I thought if I don't, if I don't try and get along with these people, I'll be alone. <laughs> so I tried to go out with them, and you know what? I thought that alcohol made uh, made everything sound a bit clearer, which is. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, I thought my English was amazing. Every time I had a few pints, I was like, "Oh, my English is actually really good." <laughs> Probably not. Um, <laughs> But um, that that's how I made real real life friends, and you know because then you went out that Friday, and people got to talk outside the the work um, setting. Then we become more friends. We would have lunch together, and I we had a foosball table, so we had a foosball a lot of foosball games. Um, so I really try to to just mingle, and I know it's not easy because a lot of people are working from home these days. Yeah, I, I think so. I don't know if in America people are still. Doing that here in Ireland is a bit of a hybrid for everybody that works in yeah. studios. They kind of only go two days a week, I think, and that's hard. There's, I think there's quite a few people that are still working from home around here. I don't think it's it's uncommon for people okay. to sort of um, uh, sort of remote in some way, or or it's a little bit more flexible than what it once was. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, maybe it's Do back to the other direction. Uh, I don't. To be honest, I'm teaching, and I my work week is a little bit more varied and always has been. So I don't keep track of it all that much sort of okay. how it reflects. So th let me ask a question then sort of tangentially to the idea of like, how do you find friends uh, to <laughs> yeah, shift it to, you have a writing group that you work with mm -hmm. and you know, a lot of them are, are, are a crit group and a lot of them aren't necessarily illustrators, mm -hmm. but you find those people because are those the same people from the studio that you're at or is that a different group? No, they're complete. I actually not on those groups anymore since I since I uh, since my daughter was born because I became too busy with life, okay. um. So I had to eventually drop drop the groups. I I wasn't keeping up with I wasn't writing uh, at the same pace that I was. Yeah. And then they're in, they're in, they're all in America, so they eventually all needed to change the times. And I was like, oh look, it's okay. Just change the time because I really I can't keep up. Uh, I can't. It's even now to meet you is a little tricky because that means um that's the time that my daughter uh comes home uh and i was like i don't you know the, when even for drawing i just didn't have time not drawing for writing i didn't have time to write something to show on my critique group anyways i'm not on the critique groups anymore sorry and yeah. um, sometimes i go on a tangent that, <laughs> um so your daughter so, was spending for herself yes yeah, she, she is with the dog she'll be fine yeah she'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> the dog and hope for the best um, no, they're my partners there. <laughs> no, but um, I found them through uh, my agent, actually.
actually told me because I said, uh, James, I need to get better at right writing. Maybe I should do a course. What do you think of this course, this course, this course? And he said, I don't think you need more courses. I think you need to start writing. And maybe you need a motivational group to make you write. So besides signing on to SCBWI, um, uh, he told me to, to, which I was already a part of, he told me to get into 12 by 12, which is a writer's group. So it's a yeah. picture book writer group, which you probably know, uh, with Julie Hedlund. And uh, when he told me about it, uh, it was October or November. And you can't sign in until January, February the next year. That's when they have the, the doors open for new members. Um, and my goodness, I put on my calendar, I, I watched all the videos that they had. And I was like, this is, this is a serious group of writers. Like maybe, maybe if I sign in, even if I don't write, at least I, I, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to commit. In my head, I'm committing to this writing task. Um, so when I, when I sign up, uh, then I try to find the critique group, which wasn't easy because only myself and another girl um, were in Ireland. Uh, and I think another one was in Scotland. Uh, so we could find a, a time that su suited everybody in America because then everybody was in different states. So everybody had different times. So some of them were teachers, some of them were not working. They were just, they were trying to, to pursue being writers. So we could find a time that was 8 p.m. for us, but it was 2 p.m. for them or something like that. And that's how I found them. Uh, so yeah, on, on the on the forums for 12 by 12. But I know you can find them on SCB. Yeah, yeah, no, there's, there's, the reason I ask in particular is I know there's a lot of folks out there that are trying to find crit groups or are questioning about sort of like, yeah, how do you network? Uh, uh, mm -hmm. Especially moving to a new country, I imagine that's that, you know, that's probably just as challenging, if not more challenging than uh, looking in just like the same city. Um, mm -hmm. you're, you're having to create a whole new friend group that potentially wasn't there to begin with. Um, mm -hmm. I finally figured out out what I'm gonna do with this piece that I'm working on. Wow, I'm blurry. All of this. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna do a rainbow that runs through to a little cottage that's in the back, but it's gonna wrap itself in a weird way through all of the trees that I'm building. So far, we just have forest, but I finally figured it out. You know, an hour, uh, almost two hours in, I finally figured out what I'm doing. <laughs> uh, not too far off from my uh, my normal mo of of uh people don't understand what it is i'm doing until like way later in the evening um i do know that you have that hard cut off at, at two hours that you need to probably run which we're coming up on um and I'm, mm -hmm. i give you the heads up uh because we, we don't want your dog being the only one who is uh <laughs> tending to your dog <laughs> we don't want to we don't want to hear cries in the background um so Real quick, before before uh, you do have to go at some point here, and you can stay as long as you want. Don't take that as a sign. Of I know, I know, I know. Um, <laughs> but uh, what are what are some of the the big hopes and dreams for the future in your career? Oh, uh, there's some. Oh God, for me, some authors you want to work with. Is there a book that you've been meaning to write for years and you never had the chance? There's so many authors I would like to work with. Um, some of them are already um, coming through. They might not be the ones that everybody knows about. Um, I can't tell because I, it's under contract, but... Uh, um, yeah, don't break let me see. any NDAs. What? Not me. I said, don't break any NDAs. Not no, me. no, try not to break any. <laughs> um, I, think, I think it sounds like a, a silly dream, but I, I, not a silly dream, a very kind of daft dream, but um, I just want to keep doing this. Um, and I'm so afraid that, you know, you hear that the industry slowed down. Um, and I felt, I feel like it's slowing down a lot for me. Uh, for, for I haven't got as many uh, jobs as I was getting at the beginning, even though I've only been here for <laughs> since 2020. Yeah. Um, uh, I feel like it's not, I'm not getting called as much for uh, for jobs. Uh, as, uh, if I'm not writing, um, it's not as easy to get a call saying, do you want to illustrate this book? Or even the other day I had to do a test for uh, a book and I thought, you know, I really gave it my all because I like I really liked the manuscript and I, you know, I, I was like, no, I really want to get this job and, you know, for my future because it would be nice to, 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 to go back to it once my daughter is born. Yeah. 
our second daughter. And I failed the, the test. It really hurts when it happens. Wait, wait, uh, wait, wait, wait. Help me through this. You had to do a test, though? Yeah, I mean it was. They, I, they asked a few illustrators to do a, a little character design test for the main character. So they gave us the manuscript. They asked us if we want. We, we, it's a paid test. It was paid, so in fairness. Yeah. All good. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, it was. It was. So the only jobs I've got so far uh, are either ones that I wrote, uh, the latest one, sorry. So the Peekaboo, I have a few books that I, they're gonna come up. So I, after my daughter is born, I can still uh, work on some of the books, so that's okay. Yeah. So that gives me income to continue doing what I want okay. in, in, in Kidlit. And then I have one book that it's been not moving since uh, last year because of change of, uh, the team changed completely, uh, the, the editorial team changed and they're just doing a lot of changes to the story, so we're waiting on that. Then other than that, I got only books from KiwiCo, you know, you know, KiwiCo, yep. the, the, the toy company. They're not publishing house. I mean, they're amazing to work with, really nice team. Deadlines are mental, but the, the team is lovely. Um, <laughs> what does a, a mental deadline mean? Uh, ma make a book in two months. It's ridiculous. Like, oh, it's okay. really fast. It's really, really fast. Um, but of course, they, they have all the story done and they kind of have an idea of what they want to see in each spread. Uh, so it's not completely, um, you know, I don't have to think from nothing. They actually do have, we want the character doing this in this spread, you know, it's not completely blank. But um, other than that, I haven't got, got like much more illustration uh, jobs from just, just as an illustrator and that terrifies me. Um, so my goal would be to continue staying in this industry. I just want to just want to continue working in this industry. So uh, I don't know if you felt that slowdown in the industry at all. I don't know if I'm the only one or I, I don't know if there's the economy. down for me a little bit. Um, but I also, I mean, I, I have the, the, I have the safety net of teaching. Mm. And I also do other types of illustration beyond just kid lit and, you know, gallery stuff is always kind of going and editorial okay. that will pop up and whatnot. So I'm not as worried, but I do know that there is still that question in the back of my head because everybody's been saying like, oh, the industry is slowing down big time. Um, but I also, from my perception of what I've heard, a lot of it has to do with just they got to get through some of the pandemic crunch that they had wherein they bought a lot of things then and things are backlogged and the theory that i've heard thrown around is that um because of shortages of paper stock and all sorts of things like that right it's uh they got backlogged on what they got to produce and so they got to get through all of that before they can actually open up for other submissions or that okay, okay. and so I don't know if that's true or not. That's the sort of rumor that I've heard. Right. But right. if that's true, then that means there is, you know, a point in time where it starts to lighten up. Um, but I do think that I've heard enough of people saying like, yeah, it's, it's changing. Whether mm -hmm. it's changing for the better, for the worse, who knows? Um, just keep writing good stories. That's the, yeah. that's the trick. Yeah. That just, just, just keep, just keep doing. I mean, and if not, I'll, Try, I'll try to get some other books uh, some other way. If nobody wants to buy them, I'll try to self-publish. I don't know. Um, terrifying. I don't want to self. I don't know if I want to self-publish. Um, I've heard that's also a venue, but I, I don't know. I really like the system that I have now. I love working with my agent. I love working with other authors. Um, I love not having to do all the marketing, even though you have to do a very heavy lifting on the marketing. <laughs> I know that you have to do a lot. Um, yeah, I just want to continue in this industry until I can't anymore when, when I'm very old, I hope. Yep. <laughs> so that's that's my big goal. I think every, like being in illustration for as long as I have and seeing and studying sort of the history of it and whatnot, there's always an ebb and a flow. And I think, you know, it might die down for a little bit, but then it will pick back up again. Um, and it's a matter of just, are you, you know, are you on the front of the wave? Are you on the back of the wave? And mm -hmm. how ready are you to catch the next one? And can you be, you know, like if, if it does slow down to a point where in uh, it really is hard to land the, uh, the gigs, like, can you maintain it in the, the slow times, not necessarily like getting jobs, but more so, 
like still practicing so when the job does roll in that you're not rusty mm. of some sort mm. that's that's it yeah. that's the challenge um yeah. so i think i'm gonna I keep doing it um, as long as i don't need and i know it sounds bad because i love animation but i don't really want to go back i don't feel like i want to go back uh just yet i feel like i'm happy where i am now um, and I'm very grateful if there's nothing else and I have to go to animation and there is a job waiting for me. I mean, it's still love the job. I just don't like the nine to five, nine to six uh, deadlines. I think yeah. I don't, I really, I really don't miss that at all. Uh, <laughs> so yeah. Night sleeping over in the studio. Cause you have to, that's, oh, yeah. there were plenty of people that did that at the studio that I was at where it was just when a deadline hit, uh, you had to basically call off your life to get it done and yes. that's always fair on on the artists no uh, no no i wish people knew uh, yeah. those jobs <laughs> what? The, the, there's there's always this perception of like you get to draw cartoons and how is that hard uh and you know like <laughs> i have to break my back laying bricks and you get to draw but uh at the end of the day sometimes you're you're not at the end of the day in in animation or in those industries where all of a sudden you're sort of you are literally at the studio until you know the sun comes up and you start a new day right away and that's not fun yeah. or inviting no. involved it's bur so. burnout recipe yeah. there and there true and true um i almost burned out on one of the projects that i was working 12 hour shifts for m months I don't know. Um, it was really hard, but that's when I was in the animation team. I think the animation team takes a lot of the the, the blunt. I think in uh, storyboards we would take a lot of work, but somehow we, it was a little less crazy. I don't know. Maybe because it was right at the beginning of a project, they kind of have to let, let let us breach a little bit. Yeah. Um, because not, then if they if they burn out and the Whole, there's no work for the rest of the the pipeline but for the animators it's like groups of 40 people working really hard in the trenches and oh my goodness the deadlines was well, not always but most of the time very tough on the teams i really really look up to the animators um because they are they work really hard what's also so, they're, at, yeah. they're at the end of the pipeline yeah wherein if they don't get it done there's no backup there's no like oh we can hand it in a day late to the next yeah. group that's it's you got to get it ready and done yeah um yeah they're still the compositors afterwards uh, my a lot of my friends are actually compositors um which is not very known in the industry they're kind of a friend of mine told me very very he put it very well what they do they make everything look pretty <laughs> so they put everything together all the pieces together all the backgrounds all the animation all the effects all the yeah all the beautiful things and, and they make it really nice and shiny make all the the nice color corrections and uh my goodness they have they sometimes have to wait for the whole animation team to deliver and then we usually we're hearing from them giving out to, to the animation team where is my job where's my work yeah yep. <laughs> because the animation team is late but yeah you're gonna make me late because i you know, i'm waiting on you it all it all started with these storyboard artists who just didn't get it done in time like, yeah all went crazy shots yeah. Went to really crazy shots, you weird, you were annoying storyboard artists that <laughs> want to make really complicated. Oh, yes, I've heard that before. <laughs> Lots of people giving out. Um, why do you have to make these shots so complicated? <laughs> it was easy for you when you had to draw in three shots. Now we have to animate this. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, yep. sounds, sounds about right for, uh, for my experience, too. That it's very, uh, because I, I, when I was doing animation at the end, I was doing backgrounds uh like background work and it was for a complicated show like the backgrounds are very complicated and i know that like in order for characters to line up uh properly with some of the animation or, or the i'm sorry not the animation but the the backgrounds there had to be a lot of communication but oftentimes it was sort of a, a last minute like let's just hope this thing works let's pray right. in some way that this will all come together in a meaningful manner and you just never know if it will uh, until that last yeah. moment and everybody's yeah. riding on each other's sort of like are you sure this thing's gonna happen are you sure are you sure um <laughs> anyways let me see i'm trying to figure out colors well i think i have to go
So I'm loving your drawing. I was just seeing on my screen now. I finally got to get my screen working on the on my computer. So I love what you're doing. Love it, your texture. Yeah, so, so far, far it's just a bunch of trees. And they're not even like detailed or anything. It's gonna be a while before this is done. So if you're if you put your little one down and you tune back in, you might actually see me uh wrap <laughs> at this point in another hour plus. Um but thank you very much. And uh I I can't say thank you enough for joining me uh no, thank you. today and having this lovely chat. And um we uh for for those that uh don't know can you can you say your last name for me just so I because that that C looks weird. <laughs> yeah, you don't read it as a, a you read it as, a, an, as an S, so Lorenzo. Lorenzo, yeah. okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. Lorenzo. I was, I was, I was wondering if you go. see. Um, <laughs> it's hard. That go out hard. and get those books, specifically go out and get Walkie. Uh, what's, what's the full title? It's, it's... Uh, walk is a Dog's Tale. Walk is a Dog's Tale. Yeah. Wait, Walkie, uh -huh. though, right? No, Walkie. Wait, I have it. I have it here. <laughs> Can you see it? I don't know what's on the hey, screen. A delay on my end, so uh, bear with me waiting for it to sort of pop up. Yeah. Uh, we'll eventually, I think. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, Walkie's a dog tail. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I heard you say walk a dog's tail, and I was like, I'm oh no, <laughs> at the end of it. Like I, I thought I looked at that before. Um, but yeah, go out there and get that book. Written by you, or or not written by you, because you're a cheat. You use words. There's no words. Yeah, yeah. Don't use words. Yeah. You, you try to you try to get out of the hard work by by uh, getting rid of those words. But um, so go out there and get that book and and spread the love uh, for uh, you. for the book. And uh, otherwise, go have a lovely evening and Thank put your little one to bed. Yeah. And dog I'll try. Out some some time off from watching the little <laughs> <laughs> and thank you so much this is such an honor i really love your work so i'm super happy thank you so much thank really you. really really honored so thank you so much thank you it was a little well, chat. we will be in touch right uh, afterwards and i will post this uh once i'm done and i will tag you and invite you to collaborate so it will be on there and then i will post it okay. on youtube so you can share it all you want with your friends and say look at how famous i am now <laughs> sure. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you so yeah. much. I think I'm gonna try for me to switch off. I think I have to move the camera because okay. my Fine. phone is really weird setup. Sorry if I move. We'll get a, we'll get a little a, bit a weird shot for a second, but we'll we'll understand. <laughs> bye. Uh, thank you so bye. much. Bye. 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 So for those that are staying tuned in. Uh, we are going to talk in the comments. That's my plan. And so if you have topics you would like to talk about, uh, we're happy to talk about them here. If you're a, a, a Love is Blind fan, um, we can easily, easily talk about the reunion last night. Unless people are like, oh, no, I haven't seen the reunion, and they don't want to hear about it. But boy, oh, boy, was it a good one. Uh, I'm I uh hey J Ross uh the, the uh, uh uh what was I gonna say yeah I don't want to give away spoilers for it but it was a it was a fun uh fun evening watching that and dissecting people's uh personalities <laughs> let's put it that way dissecting how uh strange everybody was on that show and the hijinks they got into um so let's see what's a what's a good question to start the uh the post guest talk uh hmm, hmm i'm trying to think of a good post post guest conversation now again if anybody has any ideas and you're like this is what i want to talk about you just throw it out there and I'm more than game to talk about anything. I know I was saying at the beginning of this um, that uh, there, if anybody is in Massachusetts and is near Acton on April 20th, there's gonna be a uh, kids 
uh, graphic novel festival at the Silver Unicorn, which I will be one of three hosts on the stages uh, or stage like things. I think I'm on some patio hosting of some sort, but um, if you want to come see me do this live, I'm going to do it live with some uh, special guests. Uh, I found out the names today. Uh, I won't, I won't reveal it yet. Maybe I'll reveal it as we get closer, but uh, I'm not sure what the setup's going to be, but I'm going to see if I can get it up on, um, on the internet as we do it. So people can ask questions uh, from afar to the people that are involved. Um, again, I'm not hundred percent sure exactly how it's going to lay out um, because we're, we're sort of in the works trying to figure out logistics. Um, but assuming that it all goes to plan, it should be pretty fun. Um, and you should be able to, even if you don't go to the festival, you might be able to watch this on here and watch me talk to some folks that are in the, specifically the, the kids graphic novel world, which will be a fun sort of uh, twist, a fun twist for everybody. Everybody will get a chance to hear some different stories besides me just rambling on for hours. Let's see, I'm trying to figure out what height do I want to do this? Is that too, I feel like I want to actually have it up on. Well, no, I'll keep it lower. Somewhere in there. Okay. Uh, Gina Perry. Hello, Gina Perry. Uh, you're watching Beef. What is, oh, Beef is the one with um, um, uh, Lucy, is it Lucy Lou? And uh, what's his name from um, uh, The Walking Dead? He played Glenn. Uh, Steven Yoon. That's right. Uh, my wife's asking, did it seem doable? It, it, it sounds like it will be. The challenge is it may not be the standard Gavin Doodle because we're going to have less time. We're going to have about an hour per artist. Uh, who did, oh, it's Ali Wong. Sorry, sorry, it's Ali Wong. Um, uh, the the uh, it, logistics wise, I have to figure some stuff out, but it's definitely, there is a possibility of having it live on here uh, I have questions about Wi-Fi and things of the sort to make sure that it happens. Because as anybody who tuned into this early found out, uh, Wi-Fi isn't always reliable. Sometimes it's a little funky. Uh, and so um, we have to figure out those logistics, but he's looking into it. Um, for anybody that doesn't know this, this store, the Silver Unicorn, they are uh, an amazing uh, store specifically for, in my opinion, it's one of my favorite stories for uh, the kidlit world, but just in general, very, very supportive of local authors and illustrators and things of the sort. And so if you've never been and you're in the area, I highly suggest you go. Uh, it's a tiny little store. It's not, not the biggest thing in the world, um, but uh, they are just extremely nice uh, people and do great things for their community and uh, whatnot. So uh, get yourself there if you can. If you're coming to visit the old uh, Boston area, go try them out. Go stop in there and say, hey, I heard this place is supposed to be cool. Mark sent me. And then they'll laugh and laugh and laugh because I'm so popular there. I'm not. But we'll pretend that I am. And then they'll say, oh, that's so great that Mark sent you. Okay, let's see what else. Uh, did I see my question? Uh, no, I didn't. Let me go back up. Hold on. It's a question of how far back up. Da, 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 da. Oh, did Esther uh, uh, talk about using Procreate for the entire book? No, she did not. Uh, we didn't get into too much of the like tech side of uh, her career. We talked a little bit more about the um, the life and times of a uh, an illustrator in the industry right now. Um, let's see, Judy. Elizabeth Art says, Mark, you're so good on social media promoting your awesome art. How do you do it? That is my wife. My wife is very good about promoting stuff. Um, I am not uh, 
I'm not the most savvy of uh, promoters. My wife is very good at understanding sort of like uh, what to release and how to release it and whatnot. And I just, I, I'm a good husband and I follow along and I just say, yes, yes, dear. No, um, she just, she's very good at like promoting. I am, I'm the person who says, do we really have to all the time? Uh, but then I, I regret at saying that later on because she's the one that gets me uh, connected with people and she's like a, a powerhouse in that sense. Um, now, as anybody who's tuned in late to this show in general knows uh, that it comes along with some, some uh, other, you know, issues. <laughs> uh, how many years have we been married? Uh, we're on this summer. We're up to 20, 20 years. That's crazy. I'm a, uh, 20 years and it feels like 53. It feels like it's been so long, just arduous. What a, what a, uh, a horrible sentence I've had to live out in this jail that is marriage to my wife. Um, I only wish there was solitary confinement in this world, if you know what I mean. Get away from that. What a, what an absolute dud. Uh, no, she's, uh, she's wonderful. She's laughing about what I'm saying upstairs, I think. Let's hope. Otherwise, I'm in trouble. She's been, she's been very nice to me. Now to our son, awful. Just, just absolutely awful. Like, making him do chores every once in a while and eat his vegetables. Why would she do that to the dear boy? What did he ever do to her? <laughs> I'm digging a hole. <laughs> Uh, I've been digging a hole in my life since the beginning. I'm about two miles deep at this point. Um, so I'm going to put a little, this is going to be my little like cottage here. And I might hide a little leprechaun or two in the mix. But this is going to be my little cottage here. And I'll make a little thatch roof on it because thatch roofs are fun. Even though I've never really drawn a thatched roof on something in an illustration, I'm going to do it anyway. So let's get this guy stuck down. I realized recently in my work that I don't have a ton of landscapes, and that's why I wanted to do a forest today. Let's just sort of hit it that the idea of a landscape. And so this will have a little bit of a a landscapey feel, landscapey, real word. What's the, what's the, okay, here's the question. Wait, no pie for pie day? Oh, uh, no, ing. I already posted a pie image yesterday or an image related to pie day. So today is prepping for the old, uh, I think is it Sunday? St. Patty's Day. Um, <clears throat> GD Elizabeth Art, check out the thatch roots from Suffolk UK. We have lots. I Thatch roots are just cool looking. And I, I, you know what I love watching? And this is like, like we have boring roofs here. We don't have thatch roofs. But the one thing I absolutely love watching are people working on thatch roofs. Like the interesting process of like beating the, the I don't know, what is it, is it straw? I don't know what it is. Uh, but like getting it all even. And then when they like clean it up in the end and clean it and get it all like perfect, like it's the coolest thing. Um, uh, let me see, a uh, layer. Layer lunar. Do you always glue down first and then cut? Uh, it's so cool to see the technique. No, I most of the time I cut and then I glue down. But in cases like this where I got to get the edge to match, that's the only way. Like I put this down after the others, and I put this down after the others. So in order to make sure that st it's not sitting on top of stuff, I do it that way. Um, it's not anything special. It's called someone didn't know what they were doing until they put it down, uh, and they had to go back and cut out stuff. Let's put it that way. Um, some of this is I'm a person who doesn't like to plan ahead too much on things uh, art-wise and sort of 
like to play. And the problem with that is sometimes you end up with uh, things that don't line up the way you want and you have to correct them when you're in the middle of it. Uh, and so there's that. Um, I'm trying to think if there's like other things that were, I'll start drawing in some of the, the trees here. Do start getting in some of these like these black lines to indicate these are trees and not just shapes. Um, trying to think if there's other fun stuff that I can share. Uh, uh, gee, da, 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 da. Yeah, the years of trial and error. I feel you. Yeah, this is. It's. I just. I love the. I love not knowing 100% where it goes. And then, like, if I go back and watch all these cabin doodles where I'm making a piece, the first uh, hour or two, I'm like, I have no idea what's happening with the piece. And and I can literally like watch and be like, I don't get it. Like, I don't see it. And then all of a sudden, at a certain point, it starts to connect. And that's when I um, I get really happy with the work. Um, when I can start to say like, oh, I see where it's coming through. I see where like the the vision I had or the the subconscious vision, let's put it that way, starts to sort of shine through. Um, and so like right now, until I put this down, it felt really odd to me. But so anybody that doesn't know, this is uh, a piece for uh, St. Patrick's Day. I'm gonna do a really interesting sort of like, uh, a rainbow that comes down and hits the street rather than just an arc i'm gonna do something that like twirls and runs through the trees and does some really interesting sort of play i don't even know how i'm going to do it yet i just know that i'm going to do it um and it may be done with um marker it may be done with um i may just take white and put white down and then come back in and do paint on the the rainbow just so it feels a little bit more um organic of sorts um and so i just know that i want something like that that sort of style thrown into the mix. Um, and so it sort of has this weird sort of design aspect to it. And it's really about color and play of shape. Let's put it that way. Um, is experimentation still a big part of your process or is it more of an unplanned kind of workflow? Uh, I experiment, but I experiment in, uh, first of all, that's a good question. And then sort of, I hope I'm wrapping my head around it the right way. I experiment in the sense that I generally have goals uh, and experiment is not necessarily like always I need to work with a new material or anything of that sort. Sometimes it's just literally like I want to play with these colors and see where they go. Um, and sometimes like today it's I knew I wanted a forest, but I didn't know how the forest was going to sort of like play out <clears throat> in the final piece. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, and so like right now having this uh, structure, I'm not, I'm still not 100% on sort of like how this is going to sort of come to be in the end, uh, but I knew that I wanted a forest. And so the experimentation is not like a big, like I have no idea what I'm doing. I have no concept of how to use these materials. It's not to that level, but it's a concept with a design or a concept with a color or a concept with something of that sort. That sort of um, I like to play with. So let me see if I can get. Um, I do have some white scraps. I just don't know if it's enough. I think I'm gonna have to do. A, I'm gonna have to make a big batch of white just to get this guy so it works. Um, uh, let's see. The question is, do I have brushes that are clean? Ooh. Yeah, let's grab an old brush here and use it. Old clunker right here. That's got some. This one could use a little uh, working through. Feels like it's got a little crust there or something. It's cotton. We'll do this. Break up any issues in the bristles. Okay, let's get some more white out on the palette. White out. That's fun. That's not that funny. I'm sorry, everybody, that really wasn't that funny. But to me, it was. So you can mind your own. How about that? Um, so I'm literally, I'm just going to, this is not very exciting for anybody, but I'm just painting white. 
um, this is just so I can make the little loops that are going to go through and the said rainbow that is that house. That lucky little house. Is anybody doing anything fun for St. Patrick's Day? Going out drinking or something? I don't drink, so I, uh, uh, I mean, I do drink, but very, very seldomly. And I'm not going to go experience St. Patrick's Day that way, but I know some people do. More power to them. No judgment. Uh, my J. Ross Ray. Uh, there, there, let's see. I see. Yeah, with the years of experience, you probably tried all the mediums. There are at some point. It, I, I have tried a lot of mediums uh, through school and whatnot. The, there's a couple that I, I have not that I would love to try. Um, but for the most part, like illustration mediums, yes, I probably tried most of them at some point or another and sort of have fallen back to um, the stuff that I love. But I've never been uh, able to get my hands on, or let's put it this way, I would love to try mono printing at some point, but I just haven't gotten around to it. I have it at my school that I teach at, and I should just actually go do it at some point to see how it works. Um, but I'm also not the type of person who loves process like that. And so like, if there's a lot of work involved in it, of you gotta you gotta mix this and you gotta do all these extra steps like i want the immediacy and i don't know if that will come through uh and all of that but um and then uh i would really like uh i mean there's things i would like to try that are not necessarily illustration related let's put it that way like it'd be fun someday to do some glass blowing it'd be fun someday to do uh i i would love to do more ceramics that'd be fun i've never really done like, honestly, I've never done ceramics proper since I was a little kid. Um, but we do have like a little miniature throwing wheel, but it's all air dry clay. So I don't know, uh, like actually going through the, the process of like designing a piece and the glazes and all that kind of stuff. It's been far too long. Um, I feel like there's some other weird stuff that would be fun to play with, but. What's, what, let's, let's ask the question, everybody out there that's listening. What are some mediums and things you would like to try art-wise that you just haven't had a chance to get your hands on or you're afraid to touch or what have you? Are there things that are like on your bucket list of art supplies that you would like to get and try out? I'm sure there's something. I'm trying to think there's other stuff. Jelly printing, Gina. We need to, uh, we should get together and do that sometime. I have always wanted to do the jelly printing thing. The only downside that I have with it is that most of the time you can only buy up to a certain size of jelly for it, but supposedly you can make your own out of gelatin. Uh, and like, I just, I think I'd be too limited by, uh, by a small little, uh, like, I think the biggest you can get is like a nine by 12 or something like that. And I want something like this big to be able to play with, but I'm totally down for that. Stained glass looks cool. Uh, Alicia Nash, colored pencils. Now, I'm assuming that's not that you're afraid of them. You just haven't gotten around to them. Um, you know what I want to I want to do again, and I just haven't had good luck finding the right quality, is crayons. Just getting a, a nice set of crayons. Like, Crayola crayons are fine, but I think I would need to go up to the Caran d'Ache quality crayons uh, for the, the vibrancy and the, like, texture that I would want. But I also don't want to spend the money to to do that and so that's another challenge uh oil painting because i got turned off in high school because my teacher was obsessed uh, yeah 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 i probably it's been ages since i've oil painted and i don't know if uh i don't know if i would be good at it now or i'd be bad at it like my i think i wasn't good at it at the time because i didn't I don't think I put the time and patience into it. Uh, and the, I sort of just 
rushed through it as fast as I could in class to get it done. And I probably should have taken more time. Um, I don't, I just realized I'm going to cover this up. And here's the reason why I'm going to cover this up. It looks like a basketball to me and I don't want a basketball in this piece. Um, that's, that's problematic. So I'm just going to come in and I'm going to find, I'm going to darken this up a little bit on the edge and make it so it doesn't match so close and just cover that sucker up. That's what collage is for. Uh, yeah, the, the layer lunar, the Karen Dosh, the Neo color ones, um, that's probably the ones that I, I would aim towards. I just need to bite the bullet at some point and get the, buy them. I just know they, they cost a, a pretty penny. And so I'm a little bit uh, wary on putting that kind of money in yet, if it's just an experiment. I need to get like a few of them and find the colors that I, I need, use those, and then decide later on that like whether I want to get the full, the whole thing or not. Um, but I have to order them. And that's the challenge of like the art store that I go to. It's either you have to buy the big set, the art store, the craft store that I go to, or you have to buy uh, them online. And it's always hard to pick colors when it's online. Um, let's see, layer lunar. This is a limited color palette set by Bea Valley. It's really amazing and not too expensive. Highly recommend. Okay, I'll look into it. Um, yeah, I just I need I need to figure out what it is that I want uh, when it comes to that. So, does everybody see a basketball now that I said a basketball on that one thing? It just looks so much like a basketball. It's too orange. For, I think if that was like on blue, I wouldn't have an issue, but because it's that orange, so I'm going to change the color of that piece or change that piece over completely to begin with. Um, well, I'm still waiting for the white to dry and then I'll, I'll get my my full uh, rainbow started on this piece. Okay, so it's that chunk of glue that got stuck in. Uh, let's see, I'm trying to think if there's other, are there other supplies that I'm like, you know what I had that I really loved? I don't know where it is. It's probably around my studio here somewhere, or it's it may actually be at school in a in a container they have. Um, is a electric eraser. I know it sounds it makes me sound lazy, but an electric eraser is pretty cool actually. So, I mean, it's not like cool like oh check me out I'm cool, but more just like handy at times. Uh, but it does make you cool, I think. I don't know. Maybe. Uh, uh, let's see. What else? What else we got? What else we got? I'm trying to figure out if I can get a little bit of like a pinkish smoke to come out of this house. A bit more uh, punchier. Color to come out. Touch. Touch it with a little bit of that. Uh, Where's that red? Oh, there we go. Uh, let's see. Gina Perry. Uh, I just looked at those set up. Thank you. I love their palettes. In the smaller set. Okay, I'll, I'll look into that one. That one might be feasible. And I, I don't even know how I would use them. I mean, the challenge, one of the challenges that I'd have is if it's, I, I'd have to use it probably at the end because if it becomes too much of a wax resist. That might be challenging for what I'm trying to do, um, but just the idea of like, I mean, maybe there there's an advantage to that too of like if I do that that I don't have to, um, I I can paint over it and not have it disappear or get smudged of any sort. Um, are there? Okay, so outside of materials. Are there techniques that people are scared to do? Like, I, I know that when I started doing the collage stuff, I was like, I don't know if collage makes sense for me. And like, it was more of just like, I'm gonna try it and see what happens. And then all of a sudden it like clicked. Um, but uh, like, one of the things I've done that I thought would be super cool, and then I realized that it's just so much work is mural work. Mural work is so taxing on the body. Um, and, and you wouldn't necessarily like go into it going like, oh yeah, this is going to be uh, the easiest thing in the world 
I understand that, but like physically holding your arms up all day trying to work on something is is weirdly taxing uh, in a way that you're just not ready for unless you like you know unless you're a fresco artist of some sort maybe that's maybe that's standard but um, are there are there techniques or applications that people are afraid to try wait oh they're not waxy they're watercolor interesting okay all right, I'll have to try that. It's a question of like, I'm a I'm a person who gets a lot of smudges everywhere, and if uh, <laughs> let's just say I'm not the the cleanest or the meanest uh, uh, illustrator around, and so if I end up making more of a mess, I'll have to see. I'll 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 give them a try. Okay, so let's see if we can get some some uh, rainbow showing up. So I'm just going to start by cutting some shapes and see what happens. I'm going to give that curve a little bit over. I do this. Okay. It doesn't have to be perfect, it just needs to be sort of fun. So like if I have this come up here, go there, and then let's see if I can get it to like Let's see how can, I, how can I get this curve right here? Yeah, so let's chop this one. Let's see. If I bring that around there, that comes out here. And go behind that one. In the end, it needs to come out up over here. I know that, so it sort of leads us in. Uh, they have both. There are the one gen, they are wax, and the second gen look exactly the same, but the second is watercolor. Huh. All right. Like I said, I'll, I'll, I'll take a peek, take a little look-see, and see what we get out of it. Okay, so that's going to go behind there. Then I need that to, like, I need one to, like, curve down. something here. What I'm trying to do is get this so it like, can I get it so it goes behind? Can I get one that goes behind there and then goes behind that, but then... It's more fun to have it like here. Let me get a. I'm gonna do a little loopy loop here. I know this probably doesn't make a lot of sense to everybody yet, but it will. It will eventually. Eventually, as all things in life become more opaque, this will as well. Let's see. Because if that one goes back there, I'd love to have it come this way. And so I could have it go like this, and then maybe come out there, come back this way, through here, around there, back out that way. And then that's the... Okay, let me start sticking some of these down so I can really like figure this out as I go along. Where is the old glue stick? That's the question. There we go. And so, as someone someone asked uh, earlier, I forget who it was that said like, "How do you do? I always stick them down first. In this case, I am going to have to stick them down now and come back to them after the fact, um, like and clean them up, and get rid of uh, any overhangs by 
trimming later, but let's see. For now, we gotta get these guys stuck down. So this guy comes up here and he gets stuck right on top of this house. And so we'll be hitting this little thatch roof house in a lovely way. This needs to go over here. If I did my math correctly, there we go. It should line up like so. Then I come back with my blade, which is right there. I'm not sure. So that'll sneak behind there. Okay. Next piece of this weird rainbow. Is it called a rainbow if it goes all squirrely whirly in here? Or is it something else? You know what I mean? Like, is, I guess, rain, rain. Rain is part of it, but like, because it happens during rain? I don't know. But then, like, does bow actually mean an arc? And I just don't know the, the scientific term that goes with it. I still have so much to do on this. I gotta do like leaves and things of the sort and all these trees. We will get there though. We will get there. That guy stuck down and the angle is good. Touch there. Okay. There's that. Now, I forget where I was going to put this. I know I thought about something like this. So it feels like it's connected to that curve. That could probably work and it doesn't cut off. I mean, it does cut off one little thing, but I can manage that. Uh, sometimes when you're working handcraft and you're well into a piece, you don't like how it comes. Do you start over again by the way I love your work? That's insane. Thank you. Um, the, do I start over? I do. Generally, generally where I start over is in the sketch stage, more so than in the finish stage. Um, but part of the part of the thing that I love about making illustration or being in the world of illustration is the uh, the sense that I don't know where anything's going at any given time until it just sort of happens. Um, and so starting over sometimes feels like I don't want to say it's it's giving up, but there is. Uh, a uh, lack of uh, experimentation or um, play if I'm if I have something very distinct that I'm looking for the the times where I do sort of start over or have something that goes in that range is oftentimes more when I'm working on a book for a client and it's like oh this didn't work right and I have to start over but there is a threshold like once I'm into a piece far enough uh, and I don't, I'm trying to think if there's like a, an equation or a number I could put on that and say like, oh, this is when I have to start over and this is when I, uh, I can, uh, start or I can, I can, um, I need to continue on. Let's put it that way. Um, I would say for the most part, if I'm, when I'm working on a spread for a book, generally they take me about five, six hours. Um, and I'm willing and there's enough time in the process to be able to say, hey, um, I'm going to see this through and make sure that it's, uh, how do I put this? I'm going to see this through all the way to the end and then figure out if it works at that point. And if it doesn't work at that point, then I do it again. Um, but because I'm not putting in 30 hours into a piece, it's less risky to do that, it actually feels probably uh, a little bit more manageable to be able to say, hey, you know, five hours, I can start it over and not 
and and not feel like I've lost a ton of time. I'm not losing days. I'm losing a, a day max. Um, and so to me, that that feels a little bit more uh, feels better. Let's put it that way. Then all of a sudden, just saying uh, I have to start a, a thirty hour piece over again. But I understand some people probably have to do that, and that's scary, and I don't ever want to do that. Um, but I also, and this may be a, a bigger challenge that goes with that, is um, I like mistakes in my work. Um, and what I mean by that is not that I necessarily like problems with my work, but I like the idea that um, it, it's not perfect. And so like if there's a little line somewhere or like in this case, like there's a texture, like I don't, it's going to sound weird, but I don't like there's a little dot right here in that texture. Like, is it the worst thing in the world? No. But I also feel like if I remove it or if I somehow change it or, or sort of fight that, like it just seems frivolous and like no one's going to notice those things. If there's something that's really dramatic, like, oh, a character has three arms when they're only supposed to have two arms. Well, yeah, that's, that's a challenge and I don't want that to happen, but. Um, I, I definitely like, I love letting things be and it's, it's the same way that I like when I cook, I'm not a baker, I'm a cook, I'm a chef. Not that I really am by like, not, it's not my day job or anything of the sort. Um, but more so, uh, I, I love the idea that, that it's sort of you gamble a little when you work and you're not sure again like i said you're not sure how it's going to pan out you're not sure that everything's going to be perfect and if it needs a little extra salt if it needs a little extra um you know i don't know what other ingredient you want to use i was gonna say another squirt of lemon like great you put it in um where i struggle is when it's like there's a specific formula you must follow in order for this to work. And if you don't follow it, then you have somehow broken from tradition. And that's where I, I, I don't like. And so like, even when I'm working with art, that also is the same sort of mentality of like, I don't want to be, I don't want to follow rules. I don't want to follow a guideline. And so that experimentation is the, that's the part I love. Don't ever tell me what to do i'm not a rebel i'm like i'm one of those those like don't ever get me in trouble with the law because i'll crack i will i will so quickly turn and go i'm so sorry i didn't mean to um why is that still so wet right there it's close some paint here it's a little too thick i'm just gonna do this and get rid of it i don't have to do it um i'm thinking if I go like around here up through there and then make it look like it shot up that way so I just can I get that out of this I think I can I think I can I think I can I think I can it's gonna be a weird rainbow I'm trying to do the math on like where I want this to go because I would like it to actually like go all the way back up over there, but then that's crossing over the house a little, and I don't want it to cross over the house. So maybe I'm better going this way, and then coming back that, that way. This is like, how do I get the flow of this to work? Well, first I can do this. Let me just do this. Are our dogs going crazy up there, Lauren? Are our dogs going crazy up there? Oh, that's why. Aha! They will be, they will manage. They'll figure it out. Our dogs are nuts. Just so anybody, in case anybody cares, especially when you give them treats, one of them will do twirls and jump and run into things because treats are so important. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to add they're putting this one up here. So everybody knows, this is the like entryway that forces your eye down in. 
And it might need a little extra white because it's going on top of something light. So I gotta really punch that white powder on it. There we go. So let's get a little extra white paint here on this little brush. And I'm just gonna do this. Get a little extra punch of white paint so it really stands out there. All right. So, what are the kind of kind? What other kind of questions do you have for me? We can talk art. We can talk life. We can talk uh, business. We can talk uh, anything for a game. I'll even get into politics. People want to talk politics. I don't generally do that because I, I'm, not because I don't believe in in the causes, but more so I just. I don't think this is the place to do it all that much, but if someone says, hey, you gotta do it, don't do it. I'm not scared. Don't judge me. There go. That's a little bit better. And then what I'm gonna try to do is I'm gonna try to pick up this so it sits on top of it, which is even better. I'm gonna get rid of that little scrap right there. Hold on. Let's get this blurred out here. Ding dong. There we go. So I feed that one underneath. Glue that edge. I push it down. There we go. Good. Aha. No one's any the wiser. Um, Aang, what are my hobbies outside of art making? Good question. Coming through with a question. Um, my main hobby outside of art making is probably puzzles. Um, I wish it, it should be sleep, but it's not. Um, it's, it's probably puzzles. Uh, and I am a, uh, I love me a word puzzle. Uh, you know, Wordle's cool and all, it's fine. That's not the coolest ones of all. Coolest ones, I love a game called uh, Seven Little Words. Uh, and I play that, I basically play all the word games religiously on a daily basis. Uh, I'm very OCD on certain things in my life. And if for some reason I don't play that game, I feel like a failure. Um, I, de I definitely like will stay up late just to play that game to make sure that I I have done it for the day. Um, I'm trying to think of those other hobbies. Like my son and I have been going and shooting arrows at a archery range, which is pretty fun. Um, and then we did I did axe throwing this last time, and that was kind of fun too. And I know it's probably like, uh, I know it's probably like you, you don't look at me and go, "Hey, he's he's the most macho person in the world." But when I got an axe in my hand, there's no stopping me. Um, I am just as rugged as they come. Um, I'm trying to think. If there's like hobbies, like traditional type of hobbies. Uh, let's see. I'm dealing with a bit of work burnout, so I'm trying to find a hobby. Uh, I'm, let's, I have a puzzle app, uh, jigsaw puzzle app that's on my iPad. I must have done like hundreds of puzzles on it. Ridiculous amount of puzzles. Um, and to the point we're in, uh, it's, it's kind of crazy how many I do, but I'm also like the type of person who likes, I, I don't like a jigsaw puzzle where I get to see what it looks like first. I think that's cheating. And so... Um, I, uh, the, that one's a little hard because you like in order to click on the puzzle to see, it's not like it's just an arbitrary like image and you don't know what the puzzle's going to be. I, I wish that it, it kind of was, I wish there was a, a setting where I could say like, don't show me what it is. Let me just start the puzzle. Um, but the, you know, word puzzles, is there anything else that I'm like, I don't know. Most of the time I'm just like 
surviving, you know, living the dream, as they say, being hip and cool, as they say. I'm trying to go like, what would, what would be a good hobby for me to pick up? I mean, the archery thing is fun. I will say that. But if you're not someone who likes or someone who has joint issues, I have found that like my elbow hurts like crazy afterwards. Um, that's the part that I don't particularly like is that it, it really does feel like I'm like overstressing some of the, the joint there, but that may be just an old thing too. And you're not old. So, um, Hmm. Yeah. I mean, video games, but I like video games. The most everybody likes video games. I don't think there's anybody out there that goes like, boo, they're the worst. Um, but, I've, uh, oh, I cut too much there. Okay, I can fix that though. Um, the, I just got the new, uh, not the new, but it's a re-release of Katamari. Uh, it's Katamari re-roll something or other. I forget what the full title is. Uh, and it's pretty cool because it brings back memories. Uh, let's see. Uh, my dad was a member of Chester Rod and Gun Club. In New Hampshire, if you need a place. No, I'm not going to a gun club. <laughs> I'm not. I'm. I'm. I'm anti-gun, but archery, I'm cool with. Archery, I'm cool with. Um, don't tell your dad that. I don't want your dad to find out that I'm not cool with guns. Let's see. Let's see if I can get. One more little arc back behind here so it like it pops out right there and then springs back in in that. Let's see, I wonder if it can get is that crazy? Is that too much? That's too much of a match of the one that's there. So I'll do this. I'll bring it up here like this. That'll work. Um I'm trying to think if there's anything else. They have archery. Yeah, maybe that's okay, but I don't want to be around a place that has guns. Uh, and they scare me. Like, even the archery scares me a little bit, and the axe throwing, like, uh, just the, you know, what if you're, like, shooting a bow and arrow, and then, like, you sneeze, and then you accidentally turn in the process? You know, that's that's not cool. I don't want to be responsible for uh, sticking someone with a uh, with an arrow. Should that one go behind here? I mean, it should. I might need to move it over just a little bit. Let's do it this way, just a touch, just a smidge, as they say in the business. Yes. Um, Aang, are you out in LA? Is that right? If I remember correctly. Is that correct? Not to hijack the topic, but do you write a lot of your books or two, or do you many books on illustrating? Uh, you can hijack the topic anytime. Later, Lunar. Um, I've written two. I'm trying to wrap up uh, a pitch for a third uh, right now. In fact, I, I hopefully tonight I'm going to send it off to my agent and see if, cross my fingers, that my agent likes it. Um, and that we can send it out on submission and things of the sort. Um, for the most part, I illustrate a lot of other folks. Um, writing and finding time to write has always been a very hard thing for me. Um, based on my teaching schedule and things of the sort, um, it can be a little challenging to uh, dedicate time to uh, writing the same way that I do to illustrating. Um, especially like when I, when I was really getting a lot of books back to back especially I did not have the time to sit down and write because I was sort of moving from one book to the next and 
um, being someone who does work traditionally, uh, it does take some time to paint and to get stuff organized. And my writing space is in a different space than my studio. So it's not like I'm like, oh, I'm tired of painting for a little bit. I'm gonna just jump over and write for an hour. Um, I have to go to a whole new location and then just life gets in the way. Um, and so uh, I have a bunch of ideas and I've pitched off previously, but uh, none of them have really taken off in the same way uh, as my initial couple of books. Um, but I also enjoy just illustrating other people's work. Um, there is a, uh, and not to say that it's easy of any sort, but it is definitely like, it is something that I understand and can move through at a faster pace than trying to write my own stuff. Um, if that makes any sense. Um, writing is just not something I was really trained in. Uh, not to the level of the same thing that I'm doing for illustration. So um, I'm going to try though. I'm going to try to be more of a writer as time goes on. I definitely write, like, to be honest, I, I have ideas. I'm an idea person. That's a better way to put it. You asked for someone to come up with ideas for picture books. Um, I'm really good at that. I can give you ideas out the wazoo, wherever the wazoo is. I don't know. Um, but sitting down and actually writing them out, that's the challenge. Uh, so later then, did you get into children's literature after, or no, sorry, later in life, have you always been doing this? Um, so, uh, yeah, for those that don't know my, my life, the history that is my life, um, I started out in illustration, uh, I, I went to school for illustration and my goal at the time was to become a, um, a comic book artist when I first went to school. And then about a year in, I was like, or during that year, I was like, oh, sci-fi illustration. That's cool. I want to do that. Um, and then I started taking other classes and realized that there were a bunch of different other things. So I, at a certain point I was into Sophomore year was primarily editorial. I was interested in that. Junior year was children's books. Uh, and then senior year was graphic design. I was like really into design stuff or things of the sort. Um, and over time that sort of shifted and my, my interest sort of waned on um, the children's, uh, children's lit. Uh, and I was moving on to other things. I ended up in animation for five years or more and then teaching and things of that sort. Um, and, uh, Kidlet was always sort of, I don't know. I like, I thought it was fine. I didn't really, I, I guess I just never really thought that it was like a thing for me. Let's put it that way. Uh, and then eventually, um, I got an offer to work on a book and had so much fun with it that it made sense to sort of leap into that uh, whole hog, um, which is a weird term. Uh, I think I know what it comes from, but I don't really want to talk about it because it's, it's like uh, farming stuff. Uh, and so I, I did sort of shift over to it, but it's not like it was new, like I had studied it and things, but I just, I had no experience in it proper as a profession. Um, but I, I did take to it fairly quickly. Let's put it that way. Uh, I see my wife asked, where is the wazoo actually? Um, I'm assuming a wazoo is actually a reference to the butt, but I don't know. Out the wazoo, because it's out of it. It's something that, and it sounds like to me, a wazoo sounds like it's a, like a part of the body. I could be wrong, it may not be, but it sounds like that. And so like, I just assume that that's where a wazoo is. So let's see, it comes down here, it goes around somewhere. Let's see, it goes from the house, goes this way, goes this way. Maybe comes back this way, goes this way, goes back behind here, goes that way and then, okay. That makes sense, good enough for now. Okay, so I'm gonna let this dry for a second. Uh, and then I might actually also get, let's see, I need one of these, it's only white. Or does it have bright colors in it? There we go. Oh, no, that was pink. I'm trying to find a brush that works for what I need to do. That one's probably better. 
I got a messy palette over here. Uh, do I think having children change your way of working? Not as a schedule, because obviously that changes, but as in children's book, really new viewers. Um, that's one of the questions I asked Estrella too. Uh, having a kid definitely put kid lit on the front burner. Um, I, the, when I got the first offer for the kids books that I, I've done, the first one that I got, my son was, I'm gonna say one or two, something like that. Um, you know, age-wise, to the point where we were starting to get a lot of picture books in the house. Um, we had books, and we had like board books and stuff early on, but picture books wasn't really until he was a little bit older. Um, you know, I, I don't think I attached to something like the the early board books or the lift the flat books or things of that sort um, in any way. Um, even though they were in the house, it just wasn't my wasn't my thing. Let's put it that way. Um, would I do them? Yeah, I would, but it wasn't just something that I like instantly gravitated towards, but just having picture books rolling through the house definitely put a, um, an interest in my head. And even, even now, like my son is older and is reading chapter books and reading novels and things of the sort, like it starts to make me think like, oh, should I jump into something like that? Partially just because I see more of it now. So it's just a, you know, an abundance that shows up in my life that makes me start to question some of those um, those changes. But uh, yeah, I mean, that's basically where it stems from. Um, as far as my perception of what the viewer wants, uh, I think when I was in school, I had a very distinct idea of what I wanted uh, the viewer to experience. And this is gonna sound weird. Um, I was doing really strange ideas. So like we had an assignment to like redo Little Red Riding Hood or no, what, what was it? I'm sorry, it was like a classic fairy tale or something of the sort. And I did Goldilocks, but instead of doing Goldilocks and the Three Bears, I made it about a raisin that was trying to get into a house of robots. And like that kind of like nonsensical, like what does this even mean? Strange adaptation. Uh, at the time I wanted to do these just like I think I was just trying to be weird in a way um, and different because I just didn't want to follow the same old, same old. Um, so like if I was going to do a, a Goldilocks book, I was not going to do just a little blonde girl and a bunch of bears. Um, then when I got out and started doing Kid Lit, um, you know, years down the line, I think I initially thought, hey, I need to go more standard route of what kid lit should be and so I, th I was constantly thinking like oh well i need to do the most basic like standard version of goldilocks or you know plain by plain by tradition let's put it that way uh as time has gone on i've realized that is not who i want to be i want to go back to that sort of weird college age kid where ideas don't make sense uh at first but then they sort of connect in a weird way so like a story about a raisin is kind of funny to me and I've always loved that kind of stuff. Um, so later, later, I'm doing a master's in children's illustration is a big paradox for me because I don't really know my actual clients, the kids uh, that well and not having kids feels like being a tattoo artist. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I get it. I get it. Uh, yeah, without tattoos. Um, the, I mean, basically you got to get your head back in the game of what it was like to be a kid and have childlike wonder. Um, you don't have to have a kid to be a, in the kid lit world. And I understand that like, yeah, maybe it adds a little extra flair here and there for, uh, for what you're trying to do. Um, but it's not as, um, it's not the most critical thing in the world in order to make a career or a goal of it. Um, where I think that uh, most people could benefit from is one, getting access to some kids. And that sounds creepy. And I'll, I'll change that statement to, uh, or I'll, I'll add to that statement so it's not so creepy. Um, you just need to get around some kids and really talk to them and tell them stories and see what connects. And sometimes that's easier, sometimes that's harder to do depending on sort of your situation. Um, I am, uh, you know, if, if you have relatives or anybody that has kids, 
it may be worth saying like, I got a story idea. Can I read the story to them to see what their reaction is? Do they actually like this story or is it too weird? Or is it, um, you know, challenging in a way that I didn't foresee? Um, that's, that's easy enough to do. And, and I think palatable to most parents <laughs> versus just saying, I need to be around your kids. Um, the other, uh, the other thing I would say is go and find out what kids are learning about and what stages, what sort of like uh, mental states they are in at given um, uh, stages in their life. So the equivalent of, um, there was a book that I was trying to write at one point that was about, um, and I still may, that was about measurements. I won't say what the story is because who knows, maybe I'll use it at some point. But it was about how measurements work and the difference between inches and centimeters. Um, and I was very dead set on like, this is perfect for this age group. And I'm, I think it's a great idea. And then I was meeting with my son's teacher at one point. I went in to do a reading in her class. And I asked her like, what, what age do they actually start to talk about measurements? And and what an inch is and what two inches is and what centimeters are and things of the sort. And she broke down uh, the, the sort of system that they use and they use standardized teaching methods that the state recommends in certain ages, they have to have certain, you know, skills uh, related to those. And so she said, here, use these standards. And so it was educational standards. And she said, here's a website that actually breaks down like, this is when we start teaching uh, measurement. These are the types of things that we teach when it comes to that. Here's how we start teaching money and how money works uh, and those kinds of odds and ends. Um, and immediately I realized, okay, the age range that I was looking at for this book is not the right age range. Um, in fact, uh, you know, the talking about centimeter or the difference between inches and centimeters. It's not just like you're measuring like this is five long because sometimes kids will go through like just how to measure things first before they even get into the like factual measurement side of things. Um, and so I learned just by talking to the teacher that uh, there was options out there for me to, to learn about sort of the beyond just a like kids need to learn how to measure. And instead, this is how they need to learn it. And this is the best way. And not all books have to be educational or anything of the sort. Don't get me wrong on that. Um, but it did definitely help me understand that uh, I had sort of the wrong market in mind for the book. And, and so that's why it's, it's gotten shelved a little bit because I'm, you know, I'm still trying to figure out, is it the right book uh, for me? Let's put it that way. Double uh, uh, Noodle, that's, oh, no, that's my guess. Uh, what do you recommend is a better way to get a project as illustrated for kids' books? Should we try to contact writers, editors, or publisher publishing houses? Uh, if you want to get into the industry, there's a couple things I would say. One, um, being a illustrator is great, uh, and that will get you in the door of a lot of publishers in the sense of like, they just see your site online or things of the sort. Um, I mean, send them stuff, try to get your name in front of people, right? But uh, one of the ways that I have found, and, and I don't think it's the, the sole answer, but I think it is something that people need to be uh, cognizant of is the industry itself, especially, I don't, I don't know where you're coming from, but uh, in the US, um, publishers tend to, the, the big publishers, uh, sort of the powerhouses, um, are, uh, they don't take uh, unsolicited ideas and, and whatnot. And so specifically manuscripts. And so a lot of authors, if you're trying to get into sort of the author side, generally you need an agent of some sort. And why I mention this, especially if you just want to be an illustrator, is a lot of those agents also rep uh, illustrators. And they don't have to always be author illustrator. They can, sometimes can be just an illustrator. Um, and so getting someone that can sort of um, rep you, and the reason why that's, to me, it seems like it's uh, sort of a no-brainer is most of those people that do the repping um, have a network that's already built in. So you don't have to go and say, you know, let me find all the agent, or sorry, the publishers and let me go out there and try to sell myself. Your agent effectively should do that for you. Um, 
And so it's, it's maybe a little less taxing on that. And plus they get in the door into houses that potentially you may not be able to. Um, and so as much as it, you know, uh, maybe not the, the answer that a lot of people are looking for having an agent, cause it does, it does take work to get an agent. That is not something that you just sort of go, well, let me just find one and I'm done. Um, it is just as hard to do that as it is to, um, to, to find uh, a publisher and things of the sort. Um, but uh, I do think it's worth it on a, a multitude of levels. Um, and therefore, when you go to some of the events that are related to Kidlet stuff, that's why you see so many people wanting to talk to agents is because it really does open up a lot of doors for people. Um, uh, and it's just because of the way the industry works more so than anything else. So, um, I mean, you can get in touch with publishers and writers and editors and most of the, most of the publishing houses also have days where it's like portfolio drop off days or, uh, um, solicited manuscript day where like basically anybody can hand stuff in. Um, but I'm of the opinion that that puts you in on those days where they like open the doors to let everybody in for just a little bit. Um, that puts you in a crowd of thousands. And maybe it's better to have a day where it's just you and your agent is there to, you know, talk you up. Let's put it that way. Um, and so I tend to lean on the agency side, but that's also because I have an agent and maybe that's me talking uh, from a biased standpoint. Um, uh, oh, Larry Lynn. I'm just saying that I definitely do. The books I make are for my inner child, but I'm curious how it changes when I have my kids of my own. Yeah, I mean, that'll be, it's always, and so, I mean, I, I have a kid of my own, but I also, it's probably different, uh, especially if, you know, if you're a mother or if you're, uh, you know, then my experience or things of the sort. Um, the childlike wonder, I think is important. Um, I think the big thing is that we just, yeah, we need to write for the kids and not for ourselves. And a lot of people tend to write for themselves. That's not always the, the best situation because they're writing a book for an adult pretending to be a kid. Uh, okay, let's see. We're getting there on this. I still gotta do so much work to get this guy up to the level I want. In fact, this will probably be until about, hopefully my wife doesn't get upset at this, but I probably got another good hour, hour and a half at least in this before this gets to the level of being done. Um, I say, hope she doesn't get upset purely because of, I mean, it's gonna be early enough, it shouldn't be an issue, but dinner, that kind of stuff. Get that, that house. Okay, I gotta figure out how I'm gonna do the thatch roof. Because that is gonna be hard. Get the a thatch roof on there. I gotta figure out how I wanna do it. Do I have scrap here that will work? Do I have a color that would make sense on that? Let's try this. Let's see if this will work. I took this thing. And then let's get some, some thatchery going on. See what happens if I like Put some other. I don't like that color. Uh, my dinner is ready. I gotta go. It's nice talking to you and seeing you create magic. Uh, I'm excited to finish thing. Thank you very much. Thank you for joining. Thank you for asking questions. Let's see if I can get like a tone. That works better than some of the others here. That's getting better. Let's see. Try 
Let's see if I can cut out something that will work on that for a thatched roof. slowly build this thing and cut it in the right way so I end up with the right amount of thatchery. I want this curve too. I want I want everything to be it's right in this house. Okay let's see if I cut that one right about there. Slowly yet surely we're gonna get there. Guy separate. That all. That's roof on that side. It's a little too tall that way. Uh, okay, what pets does it really have? What do they just do, Lauren? That feels like it was a loaded question. Where did that stack up? Oh, here it is. Uh, let's see. Can I get. Yeah, all these colors here get all mixed up. 11 small dogs? Hold on a second. Judy Elizabeth Art, you have 11 small dogs right now. You're not lying. That's not some like fakery on your, your part. You actually have. Because if that's true, that's nuts. Uh, we have two Chihuahua mixes, and they are a handful. I can't even imagine what 11 of them are like. I was going to say you're a saint for having that many, but also uh, it might be more that you're um, not mentally sound for having that many. That's a... Uh, is it by choice? <laughs> it's not like you had one and then you had another and then all of a sudden they got together and all of a sudden you have 11. It's not, not one of those situations. It's 11 of them that are... Uh, were intentionally gathered. <laughs> They're not just springing up out of nowhere. They're like ours, one of ours, like howls at a very high pitch is deafening when she gets going. The other one is maybe a little more normal, but not by much. Oh, so you took over dogs. Wait, did you take over 11 from someone else? Or did you have someone already and then 11, the number jumped up to 11 at that point? I figure out if we're like, nah, I don't want to do that. 
I'm going to do the rainbow aspect and whether it's just like some interesting colored pencils that do it. I just don't want to have like bright orange and bright purple. I need it to be subdued. So like even yeah, this purple is probably, yeah, that's too much. Something like this is probably better for purple. Uh, let's see. Let's, let's pick out our colors here. Purple, blue, and a green. Let's find the right green here. What kind of greens do we have? Is that purple or is this the right blue? Well, I guess that could be green. So let's see. Let's do a test. That's my purple. There's my blue. There's my green. So I want it to feel like it's in this palette. That's the challenge. There's a good yellow. Uh, I do need an orange, which I don't particularly want to do orange, but I got an orange. It's a matter of like what orange is not too garish in this. Uh, that one could probably work. Orange and then a red. Let's find a good. Is that a red? Or is that just bright sienna? It's not horrible. I think this purple may not work though. Might need to go a little bit more blue in the purple. What I don't want to have to do is go over the color multiple times to get the color that I want. That's the challenge. So I need to find a little bit more brown. Yeah, I don't like that. Let's try. See, I'm going to have to up the ante on the red. See, that's too close to the purple now. It's not bad, but it's the purple is the challenge. Let's see, what other colors do I got here that could do that? Raisin Noir. Ooh, that's pretty good. Let's try that one. There we go, that could probably work. So it's these. Wait, is that right? Uh, no, I'm, I'm dropping this one. So it's these. This is my rainbow here. And then I have to remember, what, what side is on the underside of the rainbow? Is it red as lowest? Who can help me out here? Because I can't look it up. Does the rainbow go red, then orange, then yellow, then green, then blue, and then purple. Is that right, or does it go the other way? Who can help me out? Who can help me out? Okay, red on the bottom, purple on the top. When you say red first, meaning red's on the inside of the arc? Red on top, so what's on the inside of the arc then? Red's on the outside then? Correct. Okay. So I'm going to say opposite. Oh, no. This one keeps breaking. I hope this is called Raisin Noir Black Grape. Mm, that's a good color. I'm trying to get it so it doesn't break on me here. Someone must have dropped it at some point. Probably me. But we won't say anything. So red's on top. There we go. I just I don't know why that's always so hard for me. I've never been able to grasp that one. Some people are so good at, at it. Let's see. I got bits of clear pencil stuck in there. Let's try that one. Okay. There is a point here uh, when we get about 4.15 that I might have to um, 
or maybe a little bit less than that, uh, that I might need to restart the feed because it'll be getting past the four hour mark just to warn people. So if you're, if you're watching and all of a sudden I go, Hey, I got to turn this off. Um, I just got to get this done, but I have only so much time to get it done before the feed stops and I have to start a new one. I'd rather not stop it or have it stop without my knowledge. Let's put it that way. Okay, let's see. And I got that sharpened that point. Can I refine it and not lose the point? It's better. It's not perfect. Uh, let's see. And this blue. I'm just trying to get these. Nice and sharp so I can draw with them. I know it's not exciting to watch someone sharpen pencils, but it's important that I do this. The yellow is already good. It's a nice muted um, muted palette there. I like it. I like it. It's like that. That's my rainbow. This is an interesting rainbow. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do. Let's clear off the space by blowing on it and getting all this junk spread around. That's fun. Not on top of the piece. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and I'm going to draw these lines. But I'm not going to just color a big old rainbow. What I'm going to do is I'm going to try to split the difference and go like, if I do a red line here, and then I do an orange line. Oh wait, no, red's on top. Shoot, I can't. Uh, I need a eraser. Ba -ba 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 -ba. There is my eraser. There's my eraser. So let's try that again. Red's on top. So red's on this side. Yes. So if I do a red and then I do an orange, I'm just trying to space them out here. Then I do a yellow. And then I do a green. I already messed up the spacing. And then I do a blue. Spread those first three out a little bit here. So let's go. Red is fine where it was. Orange can be the middle. And then yellow. Okay. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to. There are all those colorful lines. So rather than trying to come in and do a uh, a rainbow that is purely solid. Just try to do a rainbow that's maybe a little bit more. Exciting in its application. I do wonder if this would be cooler in paint than in colored pencil. I feel like it's maybe a little too irregular in its texture. Or maybe I just get to come in here and like. More consistent with it. Let's see what happens if I get all the colors in on this one.
Where's my dusty brush? Dusty brush. because that's a big long stretch one. Is that too clunky looking? Do I need to do this with paint? I might need to do it with paint. Which means I have to mix the stupid colors, which is an absolute pain. But let me see. solid consistent all right let's try this again let's get these colors out of here even though I like this uh, palette I can still use that palette I just mixing it in paint it's gonna be better for the whole thing so let's see let me get my palette clean and then I get to use my lovely little liner brush I have here. Get all nice and cleaned up and I can use that. Okay, so let's get these colors then. Let's see what I can get for colors. So I can use this for my purple, which is pretty darn close. In fact, let me put out enough of these these colors so bear with me here folks I'm gonna go a little bit more saturated on a couple of these get them to feel a little bit more uh, vibrant that's the paint that's not me making that noise just to warn y'all I'm not gross I don't make 2d noises or that noise, whatever that was. Uh, and then let's get a green. Let's throw this color in the mix. Okay. Uh, da, 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 da. Where was I? I just got. I had a scrap lying around here. It was perfect for something, but I'll, I'll do it later. Okay, so let's mix our colors and get some. Actually, I don't paint on pieces very often, but I will tonight or today. Recently, I've been like avoiding paint. I don't need to avoid paint. It's not the end of the world to paint on a piece. So red's on top, red's on top, there we go. So we're gonna come in here, add a little bit of black with a touch. Vibrant red. Old liner brush. It's been far too long. Probably not going to be the most exciting part for people because I'm sitting here doing lots of little thin lines and everything. But it is what it is. I 
to talk while I'm doing this all that much, so you have to bear with me. Partially because I'm sticking my tongue out as I do this. This way. Okay. Now this one needs to be on the top too here. Some sort. There we go. Let's see. Okay, so that is on that side, so it'll be on this side. It comes back that way. Okay. So this one needs to be on top. A little too close there. Okay, which means it needs to go on top here. And then on the top here. And then this one needs to go on the bottom. Okay, now let's make that orange. Okay, let's see. Did our streak in, Lauren? We've been having problems with a dog who's been peeing in the house. We've had a really good streak recently of no accidents. Uh, it's just broken. It's okay, though. Not the end of the world. as rich as the orange here. I'm going to have to actually go back over the red. Get a little denser. So this actually registers as orange. So it's, the orange is coming out, even though it's orange, it's coming out darker than the red. Always easier to darken up a color than it is to lighten it. It should be fine. Okay. 
you know, if people have questions, throw them in the chat. In the comments, rather. I'll try to answer the best I can. Let's make that red darker. That red is too bright. Make it a little bit more of a rich burgundy red. Ooh, wow. Love it. And then we'll tie into some of the other colors in this piece. Oh, boy. Boy, oh boy. I have a guy doing blue, by the way. That's better. That registers as an orange name because the red is darker. My wife says, this is pretty. Hey, Montserrat College of Art. Hello. Nice to see you. Tell me about what's going on at the school. For anybody that doesn't know, that's the school that I teach at. So, so I'll be being sassy to some unknown factor. We're getting there. It's a much better red. I'm also going to state this is uh, it was a wise decision to jump into um, paint. Let's try to do this with colored pencil. Actually, let's see. Okay, I've got this one last little section to touch up. Right 
Then I can move on to yellow. Get this rainbow. Then the sucker. I'm sorry I'm not spinning this so much. I'm trying to get the best angle for paint application in all of these. Any spot that I screw up, I will come back and touch up with white paint. To be so that less mistake riddle. I'm gonna see if I can get the at least the rainbow done before I have to restart the feed. Get this yellow out here. A little bit of that orange in it just so it's muted just a touch. Maybe even a little bit of purple. Okay, let's see what we get here now. This is the right yellow. Looks pretty good. I can work with that. I see a red that I forgot to touch up. Let me get that red on that. Just this one right here. The color is up and it's just light or not light. There we go. Okay. I'm going to go back to that yellow. Wayward Rainbow. Of Ireland. They sadly had to arrive late, but can't wait to see the replay. Thank you, Bill Strangan. Bill Strangan, what's your, uh, I know you have a day job, right? What is that day job? What do you do? What do you do for a living? Maybe you don't. Maybe you don't have a day job. I don't remember. I thought you. I thought you did, but you well. A small graphic design illustration. Uh, I was going to say, I thought there was design involved with it. Is it something that, uh, is it like a nine to five or is it a uh, uh, irregular time? based on irregular jobs situation.
probably already answered by now. I'm gonna look up just a second. Uh, uh, well, I just said that there's the two stooges outside. One of our dogs sounds like uh, Curly from the Three Stooges, and she barks. She's a real dumb dumb. Not my wife. Just the dog. Using nine hours to pay on the job. Uh, that's, if it's a rush job, there you go. That's it. Being in this industry does require a lot of uh, irregular hours from a lot of folks. A little bit of blue. I'm trying to figure out like what color green I want. I want sort of a slateish green or something that's like a little muted. So I'm, gonna, I'm trying to mix the green and add a little black. Maybe a little bit of red in the mix. So knock it down a peg. There we go. That's better. Okay. Steady hand wins the race. This one I find out that I should not go into car detailing. My hand is not that steady. Smudge. I'm just hoping and praying that that little touch up marker that I have can touch this up. Let me get this back in range after I'm done with this. Now we can move on to blue. Blue's gonna have a little bit of again black added to the mix to spice it up a little. Through that, I'm looking for those like slate colors, like a little bit grayish. I'm taking a bit of the red, going in there again. Super pure color. I'm trying to reach some of the colors that are showing up in some of the rest of this. If I can get back 
that color, then we're good. There we go. Don't worry, go. Let's see. Uh, I see something up here. Uh, Dublin. No, uh, as an experimental process, do you did you try to draw the opposite hand? Does the result to create some Uh I've done it in, in experiments in the past. I'm uh, I'm definitely not ambidextrous uh, of any sort. Um, although I can I can bat in baseball lefty for whatever reason, but uh, art making no. I'm not uh, skilled enough of any sort to be able to maintain a consistent, and, and obviously I understand like the, the irregularity is part of that, um, but it is, it is too irregular and um, visually challenging when I do that, <laughs> let's put it that way. Uh, there's too much inconsistency there. Um, but I have tried it in the past, especially for like, Drawing games and things of the sort. Um, I've done something similar. So. This is just when he. When I started this painting, I thought I was going to be doing something about a little red riding hood. And then it turned into this. And I'm not opposed to it, which is funny in that it's a piece evolves. Oops. Lost an edge there. Clean that up. Let's go ahead and get this on. Getting close. I do know I'm going to have to do some digital touch up on this one. A couple of spots which I can't easily fix edges at this point. My goal is to have the, the rainbow done in just a little bit. Uh, Uh, illustrated to answer your question. Uh, it was a lot more, uh, it was a lot much, it was a lot more uh, uh, normal than last time. Last time got wild. Um, I, I should actually, uh, there's part of me that wants to stay in that weird range with some of the questions, but last time got real wild. Um, but uh, it's not, it was, it was still fun and interesting of sorts, but it didn't get into talk about how you want to die like it did last time. Okay, now let's get into the purple. Let's see if I can get the... I'm going to take the purple and add a little bit of brown to it, and a little bit of red to it, a little bit of blue to it. Again, just tone it down ever so slightly. And add a little bit of black. Get something that's a little bit more in this, like, This right, that's a uh, this purple is what purple. Is this this is uh deep magenta it has the tendency to overpower if you don't work it this right? So, let's see if this this does the trick. That should be okay. No, just filling in all these spots. The good thing is, kind of have the track laid out for me on this because all I have to do is just split the difference here. Let's see, it doesn't take as much effort to try to map out where this line goes. Um, 
again, for those folks tuning in who have never uh, been on here before, feel free to ask questions in the uh, comments. I'm here to answer, I'm here to help or, or to converse in whatever way you want. What's going on, you guys? It's a little bit more water in this. It's a little thick. It's a little unruly. It's a little thick there and thick there, and I'll clean those up with a touch up marker. Okay, I think that's the end of all the lines I gotta paint. After that, I'm gonna get my white marker here, and I will go back in here and clean up the edges. And here it is. Little tiny mistakes, like Let me get one of these. It actually works better than that one. Let's try this one. Get it mixed up too. Okay, I have just a few minutes, and then I need to start a new feed this because it's going to extend a little longer than what I hoped. That's okay. But it means I'll have to turn this off and start again. And those who are watching, if you want to continue on, you can hop back in and watch as I finish this piece. But it doesn't mean I have to stop it at a certain point here. Oh, this is still that bust there was a little, oh, no, there was a little pigment that came off of that one. Okay. Okay. So, let's see what we can do. I might do something where, like, there's a person out here, or even, like, should I make little gold coins there? Ping, 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 coming out of it. I don't know what that means. Ping, 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 ping. Uh, I still need to do all the details on the trees. Get all these like textures in where I want them. All the stuff. But I'll get most of that after the fact. I'm just waiting for this one little section to dry here. 
once it's dry, then I can try to touch it up just a little bit more. I just need another layer of white paint on it there. Actual paint, not just a paint marker. There we go. Okay, folks. So, we're at a point in which I should pause this feed and switch to a new one. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to literally stop this feed. I'm going to come back in a matter of a couple of minutes. And I'll continue on with this. I was thinking about putting the leprechauns and whatnot in it. Um, and so we will, uh, oh, come on. Yeah, it's in, there it goes. Pigment up there. Um, what I'll do is I will stop this. It'll take about two minutes and I'll be back uh, with more of this for everybody. So bear with me. Uh, it'll take just a second. All right. Bye. Welcome back to, I guess this is part three of Gab and Doodle. Um, in parts one and two, I had a lovely guest in uh, Estrella Lorenzo, um, who joined me and we talked about all sorts of fun stuff. Uh, part one was uh, blurry, <laughs> so we had to start it again. And so part two was the actual art making, uh, and now we're in part three. Uh, Estrella had to leave, and so it's just me. You get little old me uh, here trying to finish up this piece. Um, I am working on something that was for um, uh, St. Patrick's Day. And so it's just a little rainbow, end of the rainbow um, piece. And so I will be sort of wrapping this up in the next, I'm hoping, half hour. Um, and so if people have questions or anything that you want answered, uh, feel free to hop in the chat uh, in the comments there and ask away and I will try to answer to the best of my ability. Um, I am trying to decide, do I want to, oh, you know what would be funny is if this had, well not funny, but this would be kind of interesting if I went and made a bunch of gold coins pouring out of this house because it is uh, being hit by this rainbow. I wonder what that would look like. I'm going to make a little swatch here of like what happens if I make an irregular pile. This is me trying to get really accurate with. Skizzers here. Like, would that be kind of fun to have these? It is kind of fun, honestly. So I might need to get these the right color. The idea, like, this house is overflowing with gold coins. So I'll do little windows that go with these uh, butted up against it. And I'll do little details and whatnot on them so they feel more like coins versus just yellow. Okay, so let's get in there with some colors and let's get some a little bit more of a golden color on this one. Okay. 
stands out. Uh, I kind of like that yellow better. Alright, let's try that one. Let's go into that more of a greeny yellow here. Uh, so, how's everybody doing? What can I help people with today? What kind of art questions do you have? Throw them in the comments and I will do my best to answer away. the edge on the side here we do the math here. like this that's about as magical magical gold pouring out of this house not just pee pee but gold Gold. Okay. So let's do this. Let's get these stuck down. Put a lot of glue down on. Try not to get too much glue on the surface. This will be where there's a window. This will make sense eventually, everybody. Right now it's just some some yellow pouring out the spots. And it's not even shaded underneath properly. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back in with some trying to do right now and you probably can't see all of this but I'm trying to put 
Jackson. Some lines that are going to be the hint of coins. It's going to be small. a little bit of paint on it. Let's go in here and let's get our windows taken care of. I know this probably isn't, again, super exciting for people, but oh, it is for me. What a glamorous world I live in. Ooh, my tummy is grumbling. It's been a while since I ate. Your dormer windows. There. Big thatch roof houses. Yep. Sounds like I'm whispering, apparently. So I will try to speak up, everybody. Those are gold coins, Lauren. deeper color on the thatch, thatched, thatched section. I'm trying to figure out how to say that. Oh, my son's upstairs trying to argue with his mother.
gonna be some of that fetchery. I will go back and color that after the fact. Now what I'm gonna do is make something that is maybe a little bit lighter. Not pure white, but something somewhat lighter that can be the window frame. up here I don't know if people can hear that from upstairs but there is a uh, a child that is upset and is causing problems hopefully not for long Cross our fingers on that. This is if everybody wants to root for uh, the home team here. If that makes any sense, and say whatever is being thought about. is uh anybody want to have kids <laughs> oh so fun oh so fun oh no fortnite because somebody kicked somebody interesting Laura, did you did you say you can't have Fortnite now? Is that what's going on? Is it no Fortnite for uh, for Lauren here because she went and kicked somebody? Uh, I don't know what's going on up there, but. I need to wrap this up soon so I can get up there and help with what's going on. Parenting. Okay. Now I'm going to go in here and I'm just going to color some of the ground plane. Kids are 11 small dogs. Hello. <laughs> true. True. Uh, sometimes the dogs sound more worth it. I'm trying to figure out what colors I can get on the ground plane here that will push it back a touch. It's a matter of getting like the right. Darkness in there so it like it sits back in there. And that is not always the easiest color to fight in a situation like this. I do brush here. I use deal with this. Let's see what happens if I get a little bit more of this sort of I want some of that yellow to stand out. If I can't get that yellow to stand out, that's going to be a problem. So. Well, I was getting just the right. Tone of 
darkness here. Uh, and then lastly, let's go in here and let's put a little bit of this pink down. to work in, sorry, this is such a, a futzy little area that I'm trying to work in here and get some of this solved. I know it's not the most exciting for anybody to watch as I move. fight some of these colors in. So I just got some glue in there, let's get in there. I wonder if I take my eraser, which is here. I'm going to erase some of my glue first, and then come back and color. I might have a little bit of eraser time. Sounds like things might have calmed down upstairs. Cross our fingers that that occurred. In fact, I hear laughing now. That's good. That is good. Laughing's always a good sign. Okay, let's get in here and let's start doing some some color work on some of these trees. Textures, get some earthy tones, I want some pinks. Some of the pinks over there. Harkin. Harkin. We all know the word Harkin. Trying to find like the right instances to use some of these colors here. That's too much. I feel like these are even maybe a little bit too bright than what they were intended to be, and so I might actually just because of the white they show up more because they were originally supposed to be these sort of colors, but and that looks muted, but it really isn't. And so I might actually digitally mute those down a touch. Don't tell anybody. Let me 
actually be this one. I just gotta use it differently. I just realized you may not even see all of this image on screen. Do you? Or is it just I push it off screen? I guess you do a little bit. There you go. Okay. What is it I want? I know there's gotta be a lighter one in there somewhere, right? Is this I can come back in I can what I want to do is just soften some of the like textures that are in there. So that feels a little smoke like that. There we go. And then let's get crunched. I'm going over some facing paper there. Leaf tree. Almost a feather tree. There we go. Uh, Sufi Bill about the uh, no, Sufi yeah Sufi woman. Uh, I'm happy to see your hand work. Is that a great train? <laughs> Thank you. Uh, at first I didn't know what you meant by my hand working. I, was like, I don't know what that was, and then now I get it. I get it. I got you loud and clear. Loud, loud and clear. Where it is? It's over here, isn't it? Is that where that color's been the whole time? I was searching for it. Yeah, I think it was. I'm just trying to create some like interesting textures on things here. That's not so pure. Let's do a little sweepy sweep here. Let's see the crumbs off. Like... Oh yeah, sorry. I'm. I keep going back to being very quiet. I'm, I apologize. Um, yes, I will talk a bit louder. Okay, and then I should have, here we go, this guy, which I can go back in here and do little. Points. Here the gold coins. I'll just fill it out. Let's 
said house because it has been hit with the bomb bomb of gold coins the bomb of what am I trying to say of uh, the rainbow there we go I don't know why that was so hard get out last thing I'm doing is to do touch ups on little spots here on these stripes make sure everything is carrying the way that I want it to carry we're almost done Stripes, stripes, stripes. I just pop the user all. Touch. I feel like I haven't done a piece in ages that doesn't have a character, so that's kind of interesting that it's not done a character. And the character is technically the rainbow. But I'm not putting googly eyes on it or anything. But in a way, that's. It is the character of this piece. And let's get one last at all. See, are there any other little touches I want to do here? Hmm. What? Speak up. Okay. I'm getting too quiet again, everybody. I'm getting the, uh, the sign from upstairs that says, Speak up. Big ups. I think that's what they say, right? That says big ups. as if I'm speaking to the people upstairs. Oh, I know how I speak then. I go, hey dummies. Mm -hmm. I called you a dummy. But like in a nice way, I think. Set of the color. I'm going to do is get in here and I don't know what is going on here. Where these are. Where did that go? Okay. Let me see. Is that just pigment on top? What is that? Oh, yeah, it is. I think. Yeah, I 
stuff like that, maybe pigment on top. So I'm gonna scratch it up, color it in, and there it goes. Bye bye. A couple last touches, and we call it a night or a day, or whatever you want to call it. I do love my stripes. They show up a lot. Are there any other little spots I need to tweak? Again, I'm just I'm looking for the smallest of the small things to make sure this guy is exactly the way I want it. One thing I might actually do is bring this up just a touch. It's a little bit more curved right there. I was missing that curve. The that curve in was important to me. Okay. I think that may be it. Does anybody see anything else that needs to be adjusted? If you do pipe down, I don't want to hear it. I'm basically done. I don't need some coming in rocking the boat now. Okay. There's my magical St. Patty's Day piece. Gold at the end of the rainbow. I'm just cleaning it up a little so I can put it on the surface here so everybody can see it okay. Let me see. I'll have to post this on Sunday, won't I? That means I gotta scan it like tomorrow. It'll be the fastest turnaround I've ever had on a scanning. I still have pieces from like weeks ago I haven't posted because I've gotten sidetracked with other things. So I'm just cleaning up all this business here. So I get a nice clean stage. I'm going to put this all up for you so you can see it. And I put a black marker where the black marker doesn't go. There we go. There's all those colors. Let's get all these colors back in the colored pencils. Uh, okay. I'll show you the sketch I started with. This is the sketch I started with. I had a house and some trees and there was like a wolf. Oh, sorry, a wolf. Um, and this is what it ended up becoming, is this. I'll flip this over, Got a nice clean surface to work on. Let me show it to everybody here. And I'll zoom in a little bit. Get it all nice and clean. Oh, there's a color that needs to be there. And let's get in nice and tight on this piece so we can really see it. Oh. Estrella, what are you doing jumping in at the last second? Did you get your little one to bed? So. Here's the finished piece. It's a little house being struck by uh, a rainbow and little gold coins. So if I get in there, you can see there's little gold coins pouring out of the windows there. But that is the piece for the day. Uh, tune in next week when we have Lisk Fang on Gavin Doodle. Uh, that'll be back to the nighttime. That'll be 8 p.m. Eastern. Uh, and we will uh, jump into another Gabba Doodle. Otherwise, y'all have a lovely evening, and I will see you next week. Uh, thank you, Estrella. Uh, I will see y'all next week uh, with another Gabba Doodle. All right. Good night.